Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is a story about what if Naruto and Hinata hide their strength. Before I start, please support for more amazing content and do consider subscribing to my channel and share this video with your friends. This is written by Shuriaki san and link in the description and support writer. Let's start the video. Ayuga Hinata was, by all definitions of the word, shy. She hated confrontation, she was afraid of contact with others, and hardly a word could ever be heard from the small girl. This very reason was why she was seen as a failure in her clan from a young age. Most of the Hayuga were proud, strong, and in the face of adversity, spit in it and struck it down, demanding respect. Young Hinata, however, would shun conflict and cower away from any who would do her harm. It wasn't that she was weak, it was that she was too gentle, too innocent for the shinobi world that she was thrust into. Perhaps, if her mother had lived, she could have taught her daughter how she had conformed and developed ways to combat the endless hatred and sorrow that battered her equally gentle soul day after day, especially as wife to the clan head of one of the most feared clans in Kanoha's history. However, fate could never be so kind and had taken her mother from her, even as her sister came into being. It was due to this reason that she was the constant target of bullying by others of her age group and lack of friends. Being the only high Uga that wouldn't stare coldly at any teasing thrown their way or strike down any attempts at poking or prodding, she was the medium for all the hate and dissent that the younger generations felt towards the Hadi clan. Of course, the attacks and biting words didn't come often, as she usually had her caretaker, Ko, with her. Every so often though, she would find herself alone, feeling like a target had been placed on her back. She had learned to hide because of this, to become invisible in crowds and disappear in seemingly open places. She had to, there was no peace otherwise. Despite this, however, she still occasionally lost focus, dealing with her clan's poor opinion of her, her sister's apparent hatred of her, and her father's constant disappointment of her entire being. This was the reason why, on this particular day, she had ran straight into a group of boys, knocking the leader's ice cream from his hand. They had looked at her in disbelief before dragging her out of the street into a wooded playground, before scowling at her. Hey hey. The older boy began, glaring down at her. Anata lowered her stinging eyes, trying to hold her tears back. I am sorry she whispered. Hey, isn't she a Hayuga? One of the other boys said, moving to get a better look at her. Yeah, look at her eyes. The last one muttered, his eyes narrowing. Probably a cousin of that Niji. That means they probably have the same personality. The second boy said with distaste in his voice. People from royal families are all the same. Anata clenched her eyes shut, willing the salty tears threatening to fall to stay put. I am not like that she whispered weakly, taking a small step backwards. Maybe she could get away. She turned and ran, but the leader saw and grabbed her before she could take more than three steps. He threw her unceremoniously on the ground, crossing his arms. Trying to run away before even apologizing. What, are we not good enough for your apologies, hi Uga. He said, smirking. Anata remained with her head down, feeling weaker than ever before. What could she do? She was surrounded by boys stronger than her and who hated her by assuming things from her family. Why was the world so cruel? I'm as sorry she whispered to the ground, the tears now flowing freely from her eyes. You call that an apology? The leader said angrily, grabbing her head and shoving it to the ground. Do it properly. Anada gasped a bit from the pain of him pulling her hair, the tears coming thicker now. I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sorry I'm sore. Hey. A voice rang out and the leader straightened out to greet their newcomer. Quitted. The three looked over to see a blonde haired boy staring at them angrily with large ocean blue eyes. Anada looked up in shock, what was he doing? Did he bring someone with him to stop these boys? But he appeared to be alone. Hey, isn't he that kid? One of the boys muttered. Yeah. The other said excitedly, the one no one likes because he's always causing trouble for everyone. The leader smirked at the blonde, causing his expression to become more angry. Yeah, he's that kid. All three of them laughed boisterously at this, driving the challenger to the end of his patience. Shut up. He yelled, swiping his hand aside in an angry motion, I'm not a that or in it. The name's Yuzumaki Naruto, and I'm going to become Hokage. The three bullies exchanged an incredulous look. Hokage. They questioned, before laughing loudly at him again. The leader snorted loudly. There's no way you could ever become Hokage. He said, laughing at the small boy's words. He walked up and punched the boy in the face, knocking him to the ground. Anada gasped, looking at her only ally in fear. Had they hurt him? She couldn't bear it if the first person to show her true kindness would only receive payment in the form of pain. She watched in awe as he stood up slowly, wiping his slightly swollen cheek. The leader's expression darkened at the sight of his defiance. You looking to fight? He said angrily, brandishing his fists again. Naruto smirked at him, as long as you promise not to cry after. He exclaimed, before forming a seal with his hands. The boys backed up slightly, shock in their faces. He does he know jutsu? One of the boys asked, fear in his voice. 
Bunshin no Naruto began, as Hinata watched on in wonder. Was this boy hiding a hidden strength? Jutsu? Naruto finished, before a burst of smoke entered the area. After it cleared, the fearful boys laid their eyes on the most pitiful clone they had ever laid eyes on. It was a ghostly white, with a cartoonish appearance, that flopped sadly onto the ground, as the blonde watched it with disappointment in his eyes. They all immediately began laughing again, their hardest yet, as seeing this boy as a threat even momentarily. Naruto gritted his teeth before launching himself at the leader, knocking him to the ground hard. You let your guard down. He yelled at him angrily, driving a fist into the boy's face. The other two looked on in shocked anger, as the troublemaker punched their leader again, making him groan. I will definitely become Hokage one day and show up people like you. He spat before punching him again. This seemed to spark anger in the other two boys as they came back to life. He's underestimating us. One yelled before they each took an arm and slammed him back into the ground. Anata watched, forgotten by the trio as they all punched and kicked every part of Naruto they could reach. Blood started welling up from his split lip and cut eyebrow as they mercilessly beat him into the ground. She looked down, despair building strongly from watching her savior pummeled so badly, Anata Sama. A voice rang out, causing the trio to look up in alarm. Oh shit. The leader swore, pulling the other two as they ran in the opposite direction, as Ko came bursting into the park. She saw her eyes rest on her with relief. Hinata Sama, are you alright? She nodded, slowly getting to her feet. Ko's eyes left her and settled on Naruto's still form, becoming cold. Hinata Sama, let's get you back to the compound. He said, grabbing her hand. Be but that boy. She said, panic in her voice. They had to find him help, he looked badly hurt. Don't concern yourself with that boy, Hinata Sama. Ko said, looking at her closely. Now come on. But she whispered, allowing herself to be dragged along. She looked back, seeing he still wasn't moving. Naruto, she lay in bed later the night, staring at her ceiling. Why had that boy come to help her? He hadn't known her, and by the way Ko looked at him, guessed he wasn't on good terms with the Hyuga clan. So why? She turned to her side, her young mind making no sense of the scenario. He said he would be hokage yet was laughed at. Even so, he had still stood, defiance in his eyes, as he exclaimed that he would be no matter what and show people like those boys that he could. Such strength and courage she wished she could be like him. She had to find his secret maybe then she could find it in herself to beat her dear sister, whom she was always afraid of harming in their spars. Maybe she could make her father proud, maybe she could bring pride to the Hyuga name and stop being an outcast, she had to follow him. In the following weeks, Hinata slipped away from Ko several times once they spotted the spiky-haired youth on the streets to follow him. What she saw made her sad and confused at the same time. She had watched as he was thrown from shops, driven from streets, and yelled at constantly. People shouted demon and scum at him, even though he always seemed so shy and scared. She winced at his latest attempt to pay for a new shirt, since his was dirty and worn, and was tossed from the establishment onto his face. And stay out, you filthy demon. The man spat at the boy, who was getting painfully to his feet. She watched his expression turn defiant, before turning angrily at the man. Hein, who'd want to shop at your smelly old place anyway? He shouted, when I'm Hokage I'll make sure it gets torn to the ground. He started running away, and Hinata swore she saw a few tears drop to the ground in his wake. She silently followed him, making sure to keep her head down, so no one saw her eyes and questioned what she was doing in that particular part of town so far from her compound. After sneaking for some time, she came to a dead end, and a pit of sadness began to form in her stomach at the absence of Naruto. He disappeared she thought, wanting to comfort him. She couldn't figure out why everyone was so terrible to him, besides maybe the pranks. But she thought idly, that wouldn't make everyone be that mean to him. She was about to start the journey back to her home when she heard a small sob come from the end of the alley. She turned around and saw that there was a little crevice in the wall she looked over, and judging by the sound she was now paying rapt attention to, was the hiding place of one Yuzumaki Naruto. She swallowed, steeling herself to go and introduce herself to him and offer some sympathy when she heard voices behind her. I think he came this way. Okajsama is busy with council affairs today I heard, would be the perfect time to finally put an end to the abomination. Don't know why he's so protective of it senile in his old age. Anada's breath stopped as her eyes darted to and fro, looking for a hiding spot. Spotting a large blanket on a clothesline, she ripped it down and threw it over herself in a section of fence, crouching down and making sure she had a small space to watch the scene evolving before her. Naruto must have heard the noises too, because she saw him straighten out from his hiding place, wiping his eyes hurriedly, looking around for a way out. Seeing none, he darted back to his little cubby hole, curling into a bowl and holding his breath. Anata listened as the voices grew louder, eventually seeing a few villagers, including the shop owner that had recently thrown Naruto out, searching all over the alleyway for the blonde child. There, he must have ducked down a different alleyway a minute. One villager yelled, reaching down and coming up with a trembling Naruto. 
I found the bloody demon. A roar of approval greeted him as the others in their group came running up, offering him congratulations while looking at the child with malice in their eyes. Anada watched in terror as the tears started spilling from his eyes again, forming rivers of sorrow on his shaking face. He please he said, fear leaking into his voice. I'm sorry I won't he ever come to your sh shop again please I'll leave me alone, Hanada could feel her small heart breaking with every word he said. Please don't h hurt me. The shop owner threw the young boy to the ground before stomping on his stomach, electing a gasp of pain from him. You demon brat, you think that those tears will deceive us. You sicken me, trying to take the guise of a child to escape retribution we won't be tricked, will we man? Another roar of approval came from the crowd as they took it in turns to strike the small boy. Hanada watched on in horror as they stomped, kicked, punched, pounded, and threw the small blonde to and fro, breaking limbs and shattering cartilage. Time seemed to have no meaning once they pulled out weapons and started cutting him, breaking his small body. She couldn't believe it. This was too much. Why 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 why? She repeated this to herself for over an hour, even after the group had left the barely recognizable form of Naruto bloody and broken on the ground. She barely registered the cries of Hinata Samaya. As Ko attempted to find her. When he did, with the assistance of the Byakugan, he was horrified by what he found. She was staring. Staring at the broken body of the Kaiubi. He cringed to think what Hiashi would do to him if he found out. Hinata Sama, we have to go back now, come, nobody is going to hurt you. She didn't move. Her eyes were still fixed on the boy's unmoving form. Why 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 she kept muttering to herself over and over. She couldn't think. It was too much for her to handle. Ko placed a hand on her shoulder and she jerked violently away from him, hot tears spilling down her face. He got down on one knee and offered her his hand. Hinata-sama, it's only me. Let's get you home, come on. She shook her head slowly, looking back at Naruto. Why why would th they do this to him? She said, breaking away from her chant. Ko's eyes hardened as he looked at Naruto, resentment hidden in his eyes. While he approved of the actions, he didn't approve of doing so with insider earshot of others. Don't you worry about him, he'll only bring trouble. Let's get ho. Why would anyone do this? She repeated, her small form shaking. He didn't do anything he hasn't done anything. Ko sighed, knowing that this slip-up would have lasting damage on the girl's psyche. Maybe he should take her to Yamanaka. He picked up her trembling frame, holding her close to his chest, before turning his back on the boy. Her eyes snapped to his, horrified. No we need to help him she said, a panic taking hold of her. We need to help him. We need to help him. Ho looked incredulously at the girl in his arms. If only she knew. Anata sama He said firmly, giving her a stern look. Do not concern yourself with that boy. Please listen to my advice, it will do no good to. We have to help him. She screamed as she started flailing. He would die, she was sure of it. We have to help him Ko we have to. Ko adopted a stoic look before jabbing Hinata in the neck, causing her to lose consciousness. I'm sorry Hinata-sama, but it's for your own good. He leaped off, leaving the body to stain the ground below it in blood. Nightmares of the boy being killed in front of her plagued the young Hayuga for weeks, causing her to become even more withdrawn than usual. She wouldn't leave her room except for sparring her meals and refused to go outside. She had even stopped opening up to the closest person to a friend she had, her caretaker, Ko. She felt betrayed, since when did killing someone, especially a kid like herself, become okay? Why had no one helped him? Why had the one person who showed her kindness by helping her, and nobody, been chosen to die like that? And the one person she thought she could rely on, turned away from him, despite her pleas. She turned over in her bed, a haunting look on her face. She couldn't stop seeing him his broken form lying meters away, while she looked on and did nothing her savior, Naruto, being cut before her eyes. They had sliced demon into his small chest, amongst other words like monster and murderer into other various parts of his body. She listened to him beg, scream in pain, plead to be let go, scream more, pass out reawaken, and the cycle would begin again. There was no escape for either of them. She heard footsteps outside her door, but she didn't react to them. Anata saw as she heard the low voice of Ko outside her door. Your father has mandated me to take you outside to get some fresh air. I'll give you some time to get ready, but please be cooperative. He said, before she heard him move away. Her father had ordered him to take her outside. She got to her feet slowly. She couldn't go with Ko. It would just reawaken her questions and feelings of betrayal. She threw some clothes on and climbed out her window, making her way as quickly as possible along the halls of the compound before coming to the fence. She climbed it awkwardly before making her way to the center of the village, where she could hide herself among the crowds of people. Even though Ko could find her easily with his dejutsu, she wanted to make the effort of hiding first. She wandered aimlessly through the streets, making sure to keep to the outskirts of the streets so as to not draw any attention to herself. She wandered for about 15 minutes and had nearly made the decision to go back when she heard a familiar voice. 
Please I just wanted to find s something to eat I'm sorry. She froze, her head whipping around towards the sound. It was coming from behind that fence. She sprinted to the corner and peeked her head around to see the blonde boy with his head down as a villager yelled at him to get away from his restaurant. He was alive. But how? No one was coming no one helped him how. The man struck Naruto on the head, sending him sprawling to the ground with a yell of pain, and Hinata found herself beside herself with anger. Why did everyone treat this kind boy like garbage? Like something disgusting. She couldn't stand it. Hinata-sama. She heard from behind her and turned to see Ko approaching. Hinata-sama. He said reproachfully, you know that sneaking out of the compound and walking the streets alone is unbefitting of the title of heiress to the Hyuga clan. Ho-san, Naruto-kun is okay. She said happily, before her expression dropped. She looked distant and upset now, looking down at her feet. Not that you'd care. Ho's face twisted in surprise. He had never heard Hinata address anyone like that, knowing the girl to be shy and withdrawn. But it seemed like she was almost begging him to contradict her words. Let's get back to the compound. He said, taking her hand. She didn't argue, but looked back to see the name of the shop that had just mistreated the gentle boy. If no one else was going to help him, she would. As much as she could from the sidelines. He represented all that she wanted to be, selfless, courageous, kind the list went on. After she got scolded by her father and dismissed for wandering Kanoha on her own, she went back to her room and got her training clothes together. She had never felt such a need to train before, but it wasn't to make her father proud or gain the respect of those in her clan. She needed to train for him. She needed to train for Naruto so that one day she could repay him and help him when he needed it. The next time someone threatened his life, she would be beside him instead of hiding from it. For the next year and a half, before the academy started, Hinata trained herself with a single-minded determination. Her clansmen watched her now with an approving eye as she trained hard and long each day. Her father even gave her praise during one sparring session with her younger sister, although she fought only to a draw now. While many thought Hanabi stronger, but now on par with the heiress, the truth was that Hinata couldn't bring herself to harm her sister. While this still held true, gone were the wants to make her sister feel stronger by letting her be beaten. To do so would be an insult to the boy who put his safety on the line to help her, only for her to throw it away at the hands of her sibling, who had the cold gaze of her father. She also snuck out of the compound regularly, following the blonde throughout the village. While she appreciated the hard work he put in during training, she resented what often came afterwards. He would wander the village, rummaging for food or clothes or old ninja equipment to train with. She remembered every place that did him wrong, however, and reported tearfully to Ko that she had gone into their shops asking for help and was thrown out harshly due to silent prejudices against their clan. She got several shops shut down this way and was pleased to see that Naruto also took a small amount of pleasure in seeing the places that shunned him closed up soon after his mistreatment. Before she knew it, it was finally time for her to report to the academy. She wished she had known Naruto's age, she might have been able to get into the same class as him if he was coming this year. She felt ready as she stepped through the doors of her new classroom, immediately making a beeline for the back of the class, keeping her eyes down the whole time. There were a lot of people in here, and most of them were really loud. There was a boy with a puppy that was shouting about how cool his dog was, a chubby boy who was eating chips rather loudly, and two girls who were shouting about how cool some black-haired boy was. She took out a notebook and pencil and was looking around nervously when she saw it. Her defender walked in, a huge grin on his face that she mirrored, albeit a little more subtle. The class quieted down upon seeing him, and she saw his smile falter as he made his way to a desk and sat down. Hey, isn't he that boy that graffitis all over town? Oh I know him, my mom told me to stay away from him. I heard he's a real pain in the butt better keep away. Anada grit her teeth at the whispers that were none too subtle, she was sure Naruto could hear them too. But it looked like he wasn't letting it affect him. He walked up to the pink-haired girl who gave him a look of disgust. Hey hey, what's your name? He asked brightly, hands behind his head. Sakura. She said, obviously willing him to go away. That's a pretty name. He said brightly, raising his hand to shake hers. I'm Yuzumaki Naruto, wanna be friends. She scoffed at him. Who would want to be friends with you? Especially with someone like Sasu Kun right in front of us. She exclaimed lovingly, before turning around and continuing to fawn over the brooding boy. The nod and narrowed her eyes at the girl. Who was she to talk so heartlessly to someone so good? Yeah? Naruto said irritably, his smile gone. I bet that guy isn't even that great. Sounds like a real pain to me. Sakura rounded on him, punching the top of his head. How dare you speak about Sasu come like that? He's better than you'll ever be you you. Sakura shivered as she felt an icy glare on herself, but when she looked around the room found no one looking in her direction. What was that she thought? Anada had caught herself at the last minute looking at the pinkette as if she were about to throttle her and had turned away in time to avoid her searching gaze. I hate that girl she thought darkly. 
everyone quieted down as their teacher came into the room, a brown-haired man with a scar across his nose and the Kanoha headband tied tightly around his head, signifying him as a registered shinobi of the village. Welcome, welcome. He said warmly, watching as the last few students, including Naruto, took their seats. I am glad to see that you, like many others, are pursuing the path of the shinobi in order to protect the village. Although you are young, we will be honing your skills to make you a deadly warrior of Kanoha. Hey hey how about we get to the training then? Naruto said loudly from his seat, earning him a few annoyed glares from the students around him. Hinata watched him ignore these looks, looking determinedly ahead. I need to train as much as possible to become Hokage, you know. Their teacher looked at him with annoyance. If that's your goal, then I suggest you learn patience Naruto, because the Hokage must also hold himself with respect and manners. Naruto looked away, a frown on his face. Hinata frowned as well. Wanting to get right into training wasn't a bad thing, and Naruto did every day with a hard conviction. He was wasting Naruto's time with this lecture, he continued with it however, introducing himself as Aruka, a chunin that would be assisting them throughout their time in the academy. He told them how lessons would play out, their general schedule for different topics, and how training would go. Any questions? He said, finishing his lecture. When no one answered he smiled. Good, then let's get to work. Chapter 2 true strength. Okay, keep in mind this particular section of the AN is coming a day after I released the first chapter, and I don't know if it was an isolated incident, but it's fucking rant time. I do not, under any circumstances, tolerate blatant flaming. It serves no purpose whatsoever, except to demoralize and discourage writers. It is a huge issue that has been talked about for a long time on French Franks, and they've done a good job on making it manageable. That being said, I, as well as most French Franks writers, I like to think, have no problem at all with constructive criticism. You see something wrong? Tell me. You see a continuity error or a blatant grammar problem. I'll be happy to fix it. Even if you're so angry at something you think is fucking stupid, you can PM me. I keep them open in options, and when I'm actively writing, I make it a point to answer every. Single. One. No fucking joke. I've heard of writers who blatantly ignore their readers' attempts to ask them questions, or give them advice, or even just try to start a conversation, and that infuriates me to no end as well. If you guys take the time to send me a message for whatever reason, on top of reading my little tale that I put my heart and soul into, I will more than gladly take the time to PM you back. So if you're mad at some shit, either put it in a review, in a fucking civilized manner, or PM me your hate speech, so I can let you either know my mentality towards whatever has irked you, or tell you to fuck right off. No hiding behind your guest reviews bullshit. Fuck. No care ain't over. But really, I want this story, and every story I write, to be as good as possible. You guys help make it happen. But yelling about how Sakura wasn't this exact way in canon, and then calling me a fag doesn't help, it just ticks me off. This part of the AN is being written as this chapter is releasing a week after CH. 1. Thanks to all the people who put forth positive reviews, it keeps me going. I'm thinking I'm gonna be updating about once a week, however next week might be the last for a month, as my ship is going underway for about a month and a half. I'll try and make it fairly large, or do a double update to compensate, but I'll address it more then. Anyway, hope you guys like this next chapter. Welcome, welcome. He said warmly, watching as the last few students, including Naruto, took their seats. I am glad to see that you, like many others, are pursuing the path of the shinobi in order to protect the village. Although you are young, we will be honing your skills to make you a deadly warrior of Kanoha. Hey hey how about we get to the training then? Naruto said loudly from his seat, earning him a few annoyed glares from the students around him. Hinata watched him ignore these looks, looking determinedly ahead. I need to train as much as possible to become Hokage, you know. Their teacher looked at him with annoyance. If that's your goal, then I suggest you learn patience Naruto, because the Hokage must also hold himself with respect and manners. Naruto looked away, a frown on his face. Hinata frowned as well. Wanting to get right into training wasn't a bad thing, and Naruto did every day with a hard conviction. He was wasting Naruto's time with this lecture, he continued with it however, introducing himself as Aruka, a chunin that would be assisting them throughout their time in the academy. He told them how lessons would play out, their general schedule for different topics, and how training would go. Any questions? He said, finishing his lecture. When no one answered he smiled. Good, then let's get to work. It had been roughly two months since their time at the academy started, and Naruto was irritated to no end. They had yet to start any practice, the starting weeks at the academy was mainly devoted to theory and the history of the shinobi world. It seemed, however, that his prayers for a more hands-on environment were being answered after a particularly dull Tuesday when Aruka announced that they would begin weapons handling and tojutsu katas the next day. Naruto remembered with a pang that he had never been able to practice using the various shinobi tools, as he had never been able to get his hands on a proper set. 
any attempts to use second-hand ones that had been discarded always ended with the weapons not behaving properly, which was most likely the reason he had found them in the trash. Naruto kicked a rock out of his path as he made his way to a secluded training ground he had found at a very young age, where he did most of his practicing. It was heavily wooded with a large clearing at the center, and since he didn't have any techniques that required a particularly large amount of space, he often opted to stay in the woods, just in case a team showed up. He found his own personal clearing, large enough to fit a handful of people, and started beating on a small tree intensely. He didn't have any particular style since he had no clan and no one to help him prepare for his academy life, so he had made his own. He figured that the academy would teach him the basic style they taught to all beginning shinobi, and he hoped to meld his style in with it to make it a tad more comfortable for him. Unbeknownst to him, Pei Lies watched his every strike with admiration glowing in them. Hinata knew of his training area, of course, she had followed him to it many times. She watched the blonde begin to sweat as his fists repeatedly struck the wood, crushing the bark over and over. Her eyebrows knit together as he very sloppily followed his right hook with a roundhouse, almost losing his balance in the process. He obviously didn't know a proper fighting technique, and she had heard her father criticizing the academy's technique on several occasions, stating that not only was it a waste of time, it was dangerous to teach the new shinobi such an elementary fighting style, while relying on the genin's future sensei to teach them a worthwhile style. Hinata sat down in her hiding spot, thinking hard. She couldn't teach him the gentle fist, of course. He didn't have the Byakugan to help him spot the chakra circulatory system present in a shinobi, and the blows weren't hard enough to warrant the style without its chakra crippling effects. She supposed there might be a style or two in the library that he could learn, standing up with determination in her eyes, she watched as Naruto kicked up the trunk three times in rapid succession, eyes lighting up in satisfaction as the bark flew off the tree with a satisfying crunch. Don't worry Naruto-kun. She thought, as she stealthily made her way to Konoha's library. I'll make sure to find you the perfect fighting style, Naruto yawned as he made his way into the classroom, trudging to his seat without the usual enthusiasm he was known for. He had spent the rest of the day practicing his tojutsu and woken up early to get a good workout in, as well as another short session, to make sure he was fresh, even though they were only going over the basic katas. Now that the little bit of adrenaline he had from working himself hard had worn off, however, he wished that he had gotten just a bit more sleep. He plopped down at his desk, yawning again, before closing his eyes and letting his head fall forward, meaning to rest it on the cool wooden surface. He paused when it settled on a roll of paper, making a crease in his forehead. He opened his eyes, annoyed, and found a scroll sitting there. He furrowed his eyebrows, confused. Where had this come from? He glanced around, making sure he was in the right seat, before returning his eyes to the foreign object. Strange, he shrugged before opening it, allowing his eyes to skim the paper. His eyes widened, these were kata of a proper fighting form. His eyes slid across the paper hungrily, drinking in the sight of the techniques in the scroll. It looked to be a style that favored aggression and kept attacks flowing smoothly, closing any openings that might be formed in the middle of combat by utilizing each and every ligament as a deadly weapon. Naruto noted that this was what he had attempted to do, but as he scanned the pictures and read the words that explained them below, his face broke out into a wide grin. He had never thought of some of these combos before, but they made sense. He was always intent on hitting his opponents with his fists or feet, the most able weapons of the body, but this style had him constantly utilizing his knees and elbows as well. His hands shook with silent excitement, and he silently thanked whoever had left this godsend on his desk. As Hinata watched his face light up like a Christmas tree upon seeing the contents of the scroll she had found, she smiled just as widely as he did, while her heart sang happily. She had spent six hours browsing the library to find a perfect style for Naruto, taking into account his aggressive nature and boldness. She had been delighted to find one to fit her exact needs and had taken it from the library, dropping a large amount of Ryo on the librarian's desk in compensation for the scroll that would never return. She knew that he would tackle the scroll as hard as anything before and hoped he would have it down by next week when they were expected to start sparring against one another for practice. The lesson seemed to fly by for Naruto, his thoughts focused solely on his new prize possession. He barely paid attention to the academy's katas, and while he performed them, with a little scolding from Aruka, he had no intention of remembering them at all. As soon as the class was released with instructions to continue practicing their tojutsu and weapons training, Naruto sped off like a bullet to his training field, before plopping down and going over the scroll again. He studied it for a bit before standing up and slowly going through the katas, glancing down at the scroll every time he forgot where he was. He did this for a good half an hour before feeling somewhat comfortable and turning to a new tree. He took a deep breath before settling down into the style's basic stance, his dominant foot and arm forward, while shifting his weight to and from his front and back leg. 
This was supposed to allow him to react better to attacks, but it just felt awkward to him to constantly be shifting his weight. He continued to attempt it though, and started slowly attacking the trunk with light hits, getting a feel for the style. It was certainly more fluid than his botchy self-made one, maintaining a constant pounding of flesh on wood. He began to get more confident, throwing a particularly hard elbow after a left jab and Zenova Naruto cried out, an unmistakable crunch letting him know he had just broken his elbow to some extent. Luckily for a certain Blunette, his cry of pain had masked hers of surprise and panic at seeing the blonde injure himself. Naruto grit his teeth painfully as he sat down, gently laying his arm across his legs. He had forgotten one very important thing about training new parts of your body, everything was brittle unless it was worked up. Usually one would reinforce their limbs with chakra, slowly diminishing the amount used while callus is formed and bone hardened, before they were able to strike hard objects without fear of harming themselves. Naruto, never having a unique fighting style before, had never thought about reinforcing his elbows and knees. While the soft hits weren't anything to fear, he had gotten overzealous and struck the trunk too hard. He laid back on the grass slowly, closing his eyes as the pain started to dull. Wounds never seemed to stick around for long, especially if he took a nap. He could be back at it in no time. Anata watched as the blonde laid on the grass slowly, before his ragged breathing turned slow and rhythmic. He was napping. Instead of going to a hospital or to Aruka. She didn't completely understand, but she knew she could help. She knew how to make a basic splint and was determined to help her Naruto-kun continue his training. He had been so excited about trying the new fighting style, and she would be damned if he didn't get to continue with it as soon as possible. She grabbed a few sturdy chunks of bark from a healthy-looking tree before making her way to the prone boy. She slowly bent down, face flushing with red from the close proximity of the source of her admiration. It would be so easy to just lay next to him and doze off. She shook her head violently, this wasn't the time for self-indulgence, not when Naruto-kun needed her. She took a closer look at the offending arm, hoping that the swelling wasn't too bad for her attempt to help him. Upon close inspection though, she noted a distinct lack of said swelling. Shrugging, she gingerly pressed her fingers to his elbow, meaning to slowly push his forearm to extend his arm so as to set the splint properly. Except, the elbow had no shards or lumps or anything. It felt completely normal. Stunned, she activated her biakugan and looking at the bone, found it fully mended. She briefly noted a small amount of red chakra in his belly before it disappeared, confusing her further. Red chakra she thought, not recalling any instance when chakra would be any other color than blue. A sudden snort brought her crashing back down to earth, and her eyes snapped to Naruto's sleeping face. His nose twitched, and his hand came up to scratch it. Except that her arm was in the way and his arm contacted hers. She forced a good amount of chakra into her legs and leaping into a tree. As if in slow motion, her coat had cleared the tree line just as Naruto sat bolt upright, his head turning rapidly. She waited with bated breath as he peered all around him, on alert for possible threats. After a minute, she saw his shoulders shrug before he gripped his elbow, bending his arm to test it. Ah, good as new. He said happily, getting to his feet. Not making that mistake again though. Anada watched as he began his training anew, taking much more care this time. How did his elbow heal like that? It looks like it was never hurt she thought, watching as the very same elbow contacted the tree with a dull thud. Maybe it's the same reason why he was fine after that, she shook her head, trying to clear her thoughts. It was just another mystery surrounding her precious Naruto-kun, one that she hoped to at some point unravel. The rest of the week went by uneventfully that is, if you could consider the various antics of the relatively new class, normal Naruto continued to train day in and out in his new tojutsu form, finding that he was conforming to it rapidly, probably due to the extreme likeness to his shoddy original form, albeit with a good bit more duress and flexibility. Likewise, Hinata had decided to train more in lieu of following the blonde around. She knew how much he valued strength and the will to succeed, and, hoping silently for him to acknowledge her during the various sparring matches that would be taking place, had taken to her training with a new ferocity, earning her rare praise from her normally stoic father. They got Sundays off normally, the academy realizing long ago that training 7 to 11 year olds every single day could do more harm than good, and this Sunday was no different. Naruto sprawled out in the grass after a particularly intense workout, sighing in satisfaction. There's no way I can lose tomorrow. He said aloud to no one, a small grin coming to his face. I will definitely make someone acknowledge me. The loud grumbling met his ears, and he kicked up before beginning his journey to Ichiraku. Naruto could safely say that besides the Hokage, the Raymond Stan's two workers were the only ones to openly show him kindness. He considered the person to leave behind his beloved scroll friendly as well, even though it was probably left by mistake. Even so, it had helped him in training greatly, and he hoped he got the chance to let the nameless person know one day. As Naruto walked into the stand, he noticed Aruka was eating there as well. He smiled brightly, taking a seat next to his oblivious instructor. 
Pia, Haruka sensei. The blonde said jovially, chuckling a bit when Haruka choked on his noodles. And Naruto. Haruka coughed out before taking a drink of water, washing everything down. You shouldn't sneak up on people like that when they're eating. Naruto scratched the back of his, offering an apologetic grin. E, sorry Aruka sensei I'll remember next time. Aruka nodded, offering the boy a tight smile. He turned back to his noodles, eyeing the broth within. He isn't the fox Aruka, Hokage-sama had this discussion with you before you started teaching him. Focus on the boy, not the prisoner. Focus on the boy. Hey, Aruka sensei are you alright? Naruto said, a bit of worry in his face. I if you want, I can go. Aruka looked quickly at Naruto, noticing the fear of rejection in his eyes. They reminded him of his own. He offered the boy his first true smile, despite being a tad hesitant to do so. In a sense, he had been in the same boat as Naruto, the only difference being that he didn't have to endure the hatred of the entire village. No, why don't you sit down and have a bowl on me? He offered, giving the small boy a ruffle of his hair. Naruto's face lit up instantly, his eyes brimming with unshed tears. This was the second act of kindness he had received in a week. Although the scroll was only considered one due to the lack of general goodness in his life, this was unmistakable. He plunged his head into Aruka's stomach, holding the man around the middle tightly and willing back the sobs that wanted to surface. Aruka sat stunned for a moment before resting a hand on the boy's shoulder. He shuddered to think what the child went through to be acting this strongly for one bowl of ramen. After Naruto separated from the older man, he took his seat, wiping his eyes furiously. A oh, one bowl of miso pork please old man. He called, his voice being exceptionally bright. He saw Tucci stick his head out of the curtains that hid the back of the stand from view and smiled brightly at the welcoming grin he received. Of course, of course. Can't have my best customer going hungry, can I? He chuckled, getting to his duties. Aruka turned to Naruto when he'd finished eating, taking another gulp of his water. So Naruto, how do you feel you're getting along at the academy? Naruto smiled a little too brightly for his liking. It's great. I get to train and study and talk to the other kids, and he trailed off, his smile seeming a bit off. Aruka frowned. Excuse me for saying Naruto, but I've never seen any kids talking to you. Naruto gulped, looking slightly downtrodden. Well, I didn't say they said anything back they usually just ignore me, but sometimes they glare. Naruka's face contorted into something akin to pained understanding. When he had first showed up to his classes, not only had he acted out, but no one really seemed to want to be his friend, thinking it would be weird to hang out with an orphan, despite the countless shinobi that had been killed, leaving behind many kids without parents. Aruka drained the rest of his glass, thinking carefully. Naruto. He said seriously, making the blonde look up, distracted from his lapse into self-pity. Can you think of anyone that doesn't glare at you? Or perhaps, anyone that doesn't treat you differently from the rest? Naruto blinked before looking thoughtful. Well, Shikamaru doesn't glare at me Chouji doesn't either or Kibishino doesn't talk much to anyone, but he doesn't treat me bad Sasu kind of ignores everyone other than that everyone just glares at me. He said sheepishly, before his eyes lit up in remembrance. Oh. And Hinata doesn't glare at me either, but she does treat me differently. How so? Haruka said, raising an eyebrow. He hadn't paid much attention to their specific interaction the beginning weeks of class, as he had been trying to gauge everyone's levels to schedule the proper training to help them grow. Naruto scratched his head in obvious confusion. Well, whenever I'm near her she gets all red and starts messing with her fingers like this. He pushed his index fingers together. And she's always stuttering and never really looks at me, you know. She can talk normally to anyone else for the most part, but she gets really weird with me he paused, his face scrunched up in puzzlement. I don't think she hates me though. She never glares at me or picks on me or anything. But she doesn't act normally around me I don't understand it. Aruka smiled knowingly. So that was it, huh? I think that you should pursue friendships with all the people you just mentioned, Naruto. He said. Even Sasuke. Naruto said worriedly, showing his anxiety to the teacher. And Hinata. Especially those two. Haruka said, offering the boy an encouraging smile. Think for a moment. Who else do those two talk to? Naruto blinked. No one, really. And don't the others normally talk amongst themselves? Naruto nodded silently. Then maybe those two are feeling the same loneliness you feel and are also too anxious to make any moves. You may not find it likely, but it's always a possibility Naruto. Haruka said kindly before patting the boy on the head. Naruto nodded, a warm smile on his face at the prospect of possible friends. I'll be sure to talk to them. Thank you Aruka sensei The man nodded, shifting himself to get up. Wait wait. Naruto exclaimed, holding his hands up in panic. There was something I wanted to ask you. Aruka rose an eyebrow. What is it? Naruto smiled lightly, scratching the back of his head again. It was quickly becoming a habit. When we spar, we can use our own tojutsu, right? We don't have to use the academy techniques. Aruka laughed. Of course you can. 
the academy technique is a stepping stone for those who weren't raised in ninja families and help you learn the basics of Tujutsu. But Naruto, he said questioningly, are you saying you have your own form? Naruto smiled largely, nodding in excitement. Yeah yeah. I always trained with my own kind of style, but then a scroll appeared one day on my desk and I looked through it and it had this awesome style on it and I've been practicing it every day and I want to try it so bad I can't wait for tomorrow. He finished. Iruka took a second to process what the blonde said he had talked very rapidly and gave the boy an amused look when everything had registered. Well I hope that you do well Naruto. He said. If you perform well, you might get a few people to recognize you for that as well. Maybe even ask you for tips, which can help you start to make friends. Naruto nodded again, his face hurting slightly from smiling so much today. But he couldn't help it and wouldn't trade the feeling for anything in the world. I'll do my absolute best. Naruka nodded, giving the blonde a thumbs up. Tomorrow would be interesting for sure. Naruto watched impatiently as nearly everyone in the class got a sparring match before him. Excitedly though, he noticed there were only a few people left. Himself, Hinata, Sakura, and Sasuke. He looked expectantly at Aruka as he cleared his throat, announcing the next match. Aruno Sakura against Hayuga Hinata. He stated clearly. Aruto groaned slightly, more than eager to fight. He still managed to smile though, he would fight Sasuke. The pin cat and blue net went to their respective sides of the sparring circle, facing each other expectantly. The former quickly looked at Sasuke and waved, trying to smile cutely at him. I'll win for you Sasuke-kun. She said unabashedly. Sasuke scoffed and turned his head, gazing into the woods steadily. Sakura turned back to Hinata slowly, looking sulky. Naruto's voice rang through the crowd. You'll do great Sakura-chan. He called, hoping to win points with the girl by showing her support when the Ichiha shunned it. Sakura whirled around, glaring at Naruto. I never asked for your support. She said bitterly, turning back to Hinata. She flinched as she noticed the shy girl's eyes. Normally, they were shy and downcast. She had never expected the Hayuga heiress to have a gaze so cold and intimidating. She gulped and settled uncertainly into her tojutsu stance. Begin. Iruka yelled. It was over in an instant. Mere moments after he announced the start of the spar, Sakura had doubled over with Hinata's palm wedged into her gut, expelling all the air from her lungs. She fell to her knees as the onlookers gasped in shock. They had never seen the young girl move that fast or be that ruthless. He was only trying to encourage you. Hinata hissed in her ear. She was so tired of Naruto being trodden on for trying to be a good person. It made her sick. Wow Hinata. That was amazing. Hinata's face flushed bright red as she registered the blonde's words of praise. She ducked her head, pushing her index fingers together as Naruto ran up to her, looking down sympathetically at Sakura. Need a hand? He said, holding his hand out to her. She looked up in anger, slapping his hand away. She had never felt so humiliated and just because she had spurned his advances. Her parents had told her explicitly that he was a bad youth and to not associate with him at all. They had told her that to act kindly and trust any of his words would disrespect all the lives lost to the Kaiubi attack that had occurred. She hadn't understood, but who was she to disobey her parents? She could always trust their judgment. Naruto missed the livid look on Hinata's face as Sakura stalked away, sighing as he looked at his hand. So maybe Sakura isn't a good choice after all he thought sadly. Hinata's face quickly went back to shy embarrassment as Naruto turned back around to face her, a sad smile on his lips. That was cool Hinata. He said, how do you move so fast? They on no I, I it's all h hard w work, Naruto-kun. She stuttered, shuffling her feet. Naruto grinned. Well I'm no stranger to that. Maybe we can train together sometime and you can show me how you got so strong. Hinata's eyes widened as she looked up, gazing into his blue orbs. Train with Naruto. Naruto's smile faltered a bit at her lack of response. Had he said something wrong? Maybe trying to make plans with his, hopefully, soon to be friends was a little over the top so early. He shrugged and took his place at one end of the circle, seeing Sasuke already at his position. He looked at Naruto with annoyance, obviously writing this off as a waste of his time. Hey hey, you could at least act interested in fighting me. Naruto said, a bit of annoyance in his voice. Sasuke turned his eyes towards him and scoffed. Why should I? He said. I want to get as strong as Itachi Niasen, and I don't think you'll help me very much. Naruto grit his teeth. How do you know that? You don't know me. I'll kick your butt you jerk. Sasuke looked just as annoyed as Naruto did now. I bet you can't even land a hit on me. Naruto punched his open hand challengingly. Oh yeah. Come on then, Iruka sensei start the match. Iruka sighed, holding his hand out. The last match, Yuzumaki Naruto against Ichiha Sasuke. Begin. He exclaimed, lifting his hand into the air. Naruto charged at the ebony-haired boy, launching a strong right hook at his face. Sasuke started to slide under his telegraph punch easily, a smirk settling on his face. 
Just as I thought, he has no fighting style, his eyes widened as he was jabbed in the sternum with Naruto's right elbow, knocking him backwards. Sasuke righted himself with a back handspring, glaring at the blonde. That was one shot you know, Sasuke. Naruto goaded, but I'd like the match to keep going. Sasuke ground his teeth before launching himself at the spiky-haired youth. The Ichiha's style of tojutsu was formidable, and since Naruto hadn't had a chance to actually defend himself against any tojutsu yet, was treading on new ground during this fight. Sasuke managed to land a few punches on him, causing him to retreat slightly with minor pains in his ribs and stomach. Had enough yet, moron? He said, slightly panting. He didn't want to admit it, but Naruto was actually a formidable fighter. Eh, I'm just getting warmed up. Naruto exclaimed, rushing Sasuke again. Sasuke narrowed his eyes, noting that Naruto had recovered extremely quickly. His endurance must be really good, the Ichiha noted as he ducked under a punch and dodged a knee. I need to end this soon, Naruto, mistaking Sasuke's planning as a show of exhaustion, overextended himself with particularly wild roundhouse that Sasuke ducked deftly underneath. Wasting no time, he drove his fist powerfully into Naruto's stomach, causing the boy to exhale violently. With the intention of ending the fight, he grabbed Naruto's extended leg and heaved, tossing the boy a good ways outside the circle. He watched as Naruto gripped his stomach, taking the time to catch his breath. Iruka stepped forward, scowling. That was not needed Sasuke, you could have easily scored the last two points in that opening without throwing Naruto. You could have broken something of his for no reason. I did it so he would recognize the difference between our powers. He said, his eyes focused on Naruto's face, which was scowling deeply. So he knows there's no way he will beat me. Sasuke stiffened as he felt the small burst of killer intent at his words. There will be no bullying or belittling of anyone in this class, as long as I'm in charge. I don't care if you are an Achiha, I personally trained with your brother for some time, and I will fetch for him to let him know how arrogant you are becoming if I must. Sasuke's eyes widened and he hung his head slightly, if only out of fear of his older brother. He would definitely not make the small amount of time he could for him if he found him acting like some of the more arrogant members of their clan. I understand Aruka-sensei. I apologize. He said, bowing his head slightly. Iruka nodded curtly. Very well. You win the match, so the fights are over for Todd. Iruka sensei, I'd like to fight Sasuke sen since my fight was very short. Hinata said quietly from beside Iruka. He looked at her in surprise, before glancing at Sasuke. Well if Sasuke wants to, I see no reason why we can't fit that in, so you can actually get some training. Sasuke. Sasuke looked in confusion at the girl, who looked at him passively, an empty sort of look in her eyes. Odd, unless you already recognize the difference in our levels. Hinata said, her voice very low. His eyes widened, before hardening in resolve. Fine. He said simply, before taking his stance up at the same end of the circle he began with Naruto's fight. He watched as Hinata walked over, looking into the dirt where Naruto's sandal imprints were. She settled her feet into them for a second, before settling into the familiar Jayukin stance. Begin. Haruka said, but neither of them moved immediately. Hinata glanced over to see Naruto watching her with rapt attention, and she blushed a little, ducking her head in slight embarrassment. Sasuke saw this and immediately dashed forward, trying to take advantage of the small distraction. To his credit, he did catch Hinata by surprise. She was still too fast, however, and deflected his punch with a flick of her wrist. Rather than let that hinder him, Sasuke used the momentum he had gained turning to attempt a strong roundhouse at her side. She pushed down this time, causing his upper body to go airborne as he pivoted in midair. She caught him in the chest with a solid palm thrust and sent him thudding to the ground, watching as he leaped back up and assumed a defensive position. Rather than pursuing him, however, Hinata simply settled back into her Jayuikan pose, that same empty look in her eyes. Sasuke's eyes widened at the realization of what was going on. She she's toying with me. He thought, his eyes growing angry. He was supposed to be the strong one. All the training from Itachi, from his father. He dreamed of being strong like his big brother and trained every day in his endeavor. But he was still managing to get played with by a member of their rival clan. He rushed the girl again, intending to end the fight again. He would go all out to prove himself, he had to, otherwise all his hard work was for nothing. He jumped and sent a kick towards her head which she ducked under, quickly bringing her forearms up to block the axe kick he had followed up with. Flipped forward he tried to punch at her kidneys while falling to ground, but they too were blocked as he rolled forward. He quickly turned and thrust his body forward, feigning a punch, but really trying to land a solid knee to her side, hoping to throw her off balance. Rather than take the bait, however, she simply grabbed his arm and made to heave him out of the circle, like he had recently done to Naruto. Instead of throwing him, however, she slammed him to the ground, electing a groan of pain from the Achea. He just wants you to acknowledge his strength. He heard her whisper as she settled back into her Jayukin stance. Sasuke didn't get it. How was she so strong? And why did she keep defending the village outcast? 
they rushed her again, throwing a flurry of punches at her head, but every single one was either dodged or deflected. Finally, Hinata, who had knocked both his arms upwards and thrown her arms in a circle perpendicular to the ground, slammed both her palms into Sasuke's stomach, knocking him back out of the ring with the added momentum. They lay there, panting for some time, while the rest of the student crowd was speechless. Sasuke was considered to be the most likely to be the strongest student of all of them, if word of mouth was reliable anymore. He had already been trained by both the clan head and genius of the Achiha clan, and was taking great strides in his development. Meanwhile, almost all reports of Hinata's training had been negative in nature, so no one really expected her to shine as a brilliant Kinoichi. No one could doubt she was strong now though. Sasuke had not landed a single hit on her. The crowd was silent, gazing at her in fear and admiration when, holy crap that was so awesome Hinata. Naruto had bounded up to her and gotten so close to her face that she looked ready to faint at any minute. How did you do that, you totally kicked his ass. Naruto yelled, before sheepishly ducking his head and looking towards Aruka. I am mean but. But seriously, you're like, super strong Hinata. We definitely have to train together now. Hinata's face was the shade of an especially vivid setting sun. To hear all this praise at once from someone whom you admired so much was too much for her, and she hid her face in her hands with a small leap. Naruto mistook this, again, as a negative sign. His mood dropped noticeably, and he kicked a rock away with a tinge of sadness in his voice. I mean, if you don't want to that's fine. I'm sorry for bothering you. Hinata's hands shot away from her face as she took in Naruto's pained expression. She was the one doing it now, albeit not intentionally. She was hurting him. And no. She blurted, looking down and pushing her index fingers together. I I mean to say that I w would be very much like to tea train with you, Naruto Kanchi said, some guilt seeping into her voice from making him seem so down. His entire mood changed as soon as she uttered that, however, radiating joy around him. Really? He said excitedly, before jumping in the air and punching it. We're gonna have so much fun. I know this secret training spot where no one can bother us, and we can bring lunches, and, Naruto. Hiruka said impatiently, bunking his student on the head. Naruto rubbed the spot indignantly, looking up at his sensei in question. Everyone else is already gone. You two can leave after you've cleaned your area up in the classroom, we're done for the day. He said, smiling at them both. The pair nodded, watching as Aruka walked away. So when do you want to start training together? Naruto asked, tilting his head at Hinata in question. The girl flushed red again, albeit a less intense shade, and fiddled with her coat zipper. WH whenever you w want to, Naruto-kun. She said softly, peering up at him. His smile had grown mischievous, and she found herself entranced by it. In that case Naruto said, turning around abruptly. Follow me. We'll start right now. Anata nodded, following after him, doing a silent and private sort of happy dance. She had gotten his attention. He admired her. And now she was his training partner. Things couldn't get any better. So when do you want to start training together? Naruto asked, tilting his head at Anata in question. The girl flushed red again, albeit a less intense shade, and fiddled with her coat zipper. WH whenever you w want to, Naruto-kun. She said softly, peering up at him. His smile had grown mischievous, and she found herself entranced by it. In that case Naruto said, turning around abruptly. Follow me. We'll start right now. Anata nodded, following after him, doing a silent and private sort of happy dance. She had gotten his attention. He admired her. And now she was his training partner. Things couldn't get any better. Naruto leaned against a tree, smiling widely at his violet-haired companion. That was really good Hinata-chan. He gasped out, thumping his chest with his fist. Woo. I've never trained that intensely with someone before. I've never been this tired before either. Hinata flushed but smiled as she looked at the ground, panting partially due to her own exertion, but also at Naruto's choice to add that particular suffix for her. I I'm glad she said in a small voice, but one filled with genuine joy at helping the boy. Naruto sucked in a large breath before giving Hinata a fierce look, squinting his eyes at her shy expression. All right, Hinata-chan, give it to me straight the boy began, looking as if he was building up to something. A multitude of possibilities ran through Hinata's head at the sight of the apprehensive blonde. Does he want me to go away, or cook for him, or ask him why I like him, or confess to me, the last, hope-filled thought left her feeling dizzy. What am I bad at and how can I get as strong as you? He blurted out, looking down in embarrassment. Hinata blinked. She hadn't expected that. WH what? She stuttered, a look of incredulousness on her face. Naruto scrunched his nose. Mon Hinata-chan Naruto whined, looking slightly dejected. I don't like to seem like I'm weak, but you're on a whole different level, and I figured you could tell me the areas I could improve in. Hinata's blush came back in full force. She couldn't believe it, Naruto, the strongest person she knew, was asking for her help. I, I I'm not ass as strong as you t think and Naruto-kun she stammered out, poking her index fingers together. Naruto frowned. 
That's not true, you beat Sasuke so easily, and you beat Sakura-chan with a single strike. He added, his face falling a little at the memory. Oh yes yeah, sorry for rooting against you I can understand if you don't want to help. Anata shook her head, smiling at him with a bit more confidence than before. You don't have any reason to apologize Naruto-kun, why you were just trying to uh, support your friend. We haven't really tea talked before this so I can't uh, really blame you. Naruto sighed, scratching the back of his head. Yeah my friend. Anata glanced towards the academy, scowling. If Sakura's attitude didn't change when they met next, Anata looked back to see Naruto sulking. She bit her lip, trying to find her voice. She didn't ever want Naruto to look like that, not while she might be able to do something about it. Hey ah no, Naruto-kun, I h have a few things we can work on ttt together, she heard her voice stutter furiously as her face flushed once again. She really had to work on that. Naruto's look of sullenness immediately did a 180 to that of a child who'd gotten Christmas early. He straightened his back and gave her a look of attention she had never seen him give even Aruka. It was sort of cute. She giggled softly, before covering her mouth and flushing a little darker, now was not the time for this. W well Naruto-kun, your speed could use some work your hits are p-powerful, b but they won't do anything if you see can't land them. Naruto nodded, filing away the information. He raised his hand, giving her a pleading look. Her face grew even redder, and she knew she must closely resemble a tomato at this point. And then Naruto-kun she said tentatively, pushing her fingers together in her trademark flustered habit. You d don't have to ask for p permission to ss speak. Naruto gave her a cheeky grin before lowering his hand. Alright. Hanada-chan, how are we gonna train in speed? Well, you're g gonna try and strike a log a certain amount of times in a time limit. She explained. Then w we can get an idea of wh where you are with your speed. A accuracy isn't as important for you, so I'll leave that part of the training out. After W we get a baseline, we'll do E exercises that train your F fast reflex muscles, and her voice trailed off as she realized his hand was raised again. She puffed out her cheeks cutely and gave him a reproachful look. He looked back questioningly, before looking at his own raised appendage, as if it were foreign to him. Whoops. Sorry anyway, what do you mean, fast reflex muscles? I thought we just had well muscles. He said with a sheepish grin. The nod nodded. W we do, but if you only t train punching really slow but h hard and then try to punch quickly, you'll lose some of your power. She could see he was still confused, so she repeated her father's example to help her understand. After all, it was important for a Hayuga to not only strike rapidly, but to get their fingers indented far enough into the skin to allow their chakra bursts to actually hit the tenketsu inside the body. Then Naruto-kun, if you do lots of slow squats, your regular jumping height will only go up a little. But if why you jump rapidly the s same way a lot and train you yourself to jump in that fashion, it will go up m much quicker. She said, and she saw a bit of realization alight the blonde's eyes. I see he said, looking thoughtful. So if I train myself to punch really fast, then I can start working my strength into the hits too. So it'll be like my body will be used to striking that fast. He finished, looking at the brunette hopefully. She nodded, and he gave a yelp of excitement. Then let's get started. He said, a look of enthusiasm on his face. She nodded, smiling at the inner sun that seemed to emerge whenever he became passionate about something. A week later, the academy class was finally introduced to the basic three jutsus that were needed to graduate. Now I don't expect you all to master these right away. Hiruka said, gazing around the classroom. You are all expected to be here at least four to five years, so you have plenty of time to master these techniques. The last thing you want to do is overwork these techniques, it can be harmful to your body. Can anyone tell me why? As usual, Sakura's hand was first in the air. Kiba snorted from several desks away, and Sakura shot him a nasty look. Yes, yeah, Sakura. In order to use Jutsu, Sakura began, casting a longing look at Sasuke to see if he was watching her. He wasn't. Your body uses chakra, which is made up of both physical and spiritual energy. If you use too much chakra, you could die from the effort it puts on your body. Aruka nodded. Exactly. This is also why we don't teach more advanced techniques here in the academy. None of you are expected to have a large chakra pool or a substantial level of chakra control to be able to safely perform these jutsu. We do, however, have some other e rank jutsu that can be taught if you successfully prove that you have the control to master the first three. Sakura waited to hear the inevitable cheer from Naruto, as he usually did whenever she answered a question correctly in class. It never came, however, and she turned around, wondering if he was even there. He was, and she actually felt herself deflate a little at his uncaring attitude. Not that I need his praise or anything she thought to herself, glancing towards a certain ebony-haired individual. Not if I can get his. Naruto's eyes slowly worked their way towards the window as his mind began to doze off, only to be bumped lightly on the shoulder. He glanced over at his violet-haired friend and gave an apologetic look. 
Since they had begun training together, she had apparently asked him about a few things they had already been lectured on, and, seeing as how Naruto usually ignored lectures, he didn't know the answers. Since then, she had made the suggestion that he sit next to her in class so she could keep him on topic when accounted. He was unsure why she looked so red while she asked his opinion of her plan, but he had agreed to it. As boring as it was, he shifted his attention back to Aruka and went over the information in his head. Physical and spiritual energy combined to make chakra. Chakra was used to perform jutsu. But you needed a proper control over it to make it work properly. His face grew sour at a not too distant memory of trying to fight some bullies who were picking on a small girl. The third had given him the bunch and jutsu to work on before his academy days started to put him on a more even playing field with all the children coming from the different clans throughout Kanoha. He had followed the old man's instructions on how to mold and utilize his chakra, but his clone had never come out right, no matter how many times he tried it. As he listened to Aruka talk about finding the correct balance of physical and spiritual energy and how the level of the jutsu determined how much chakra it would consume, he found himself nodding a bit. It made sense in fact, if all of his lectures were this helpful, why had he not listened before? He refused to answer his own question, knowing that the answer was in the past. He had Hinata as a friend now. He wasn't alone anymore. Erg. Naruto gripped his hair in frustration, looking down at the deformed ghostly white Naruto that had withered at his feet. Why can't I get this stupid jutsu down? It was several hours after their training had started and Hinata had suggested that they try working on the academy jutsu, seeing as how all they'd worked on the past week was Naruto's speed. Hinata had performed all of them flawlessly in front of Naruto, who had gaped at her open mouth. She blushed before explaining in an embarrassed, stammering voice that his father had been training her in chakra control since she was able to begin studying her family's style of fighting, since such a strong degree of it was required to utilize their techniques properly. She was watching a short distance away, awed at both his refusal to give up and large chakra capacity. He had attempted the jutsu at least 30 times now and had no indication that he was even winded. Hinata guessed she could maybe make 20 to 25 copies before her chakra reserves would drop noticeably, but that was only due to her impressive chakra control. Then Naruto Kan she called out, poking her fingers together. His sulking ceased immediately and he walked over giving her a smile. What's up? He grinned cheekily. She blushed. Hey oh no I'm G going to activate my Byakugan T2CWH what's going wrong she said nervously. She had never showed Naruto how she looked with it activated before, but she didn't like it. She thought it looked weird. Naruto didn't look the least bit hesitant about it though, only giving her a thumbs up. You got it Hinata-chan. Will you really be able to see all my chakra with it on? He asked, remembering what she had told him about her clan's dejutsu. Hinata hesitated. W well kind of. I need to t-train more t to see all of the chakra network, b but I'll be able to w watch you mold and use your chakra. She said, her face a bit downcast at revealing a weakness of hers. She was enjoying him looking up to her too, and yet, that's still super cool Hinata-chan. He exclaimed brightly, scratching the back of his head. It seemed to be a habit of his, just like the connecting of her index fingers. I bet you'll be able to see everything in no time. She nodded, smiling. How did he give her confidence like that? Like a light switch flicking on, she felt like she really would be able to see every Tenketsu point if she really put her mind to it, far before she would be expected to. It was a mark of a Chuan and Hayuga to be able to see all, if not most of the Tenketsu on the body. After all, it was almost necessary in order to use the 64 palms technique. Naruto stood in front of her, channeling his chakra carefully. Using a simple tiger hand sign, she activated her clan's dejutsu and gasped audibly. This close to him, she could see his chakra reserves in detail. And they were massive. He really was reminiscent of a small sun, just due to the sheer size of his chakra capacity. She saw a large amount work its way to the front of his body, being channeled through his seal, and, bunch and no jutsu, he called, before a puff of smoke revealed. Naruto scrunched his nose at his pitiful attempt of a clone, dismissing it immediately. Black. Well, Hinata-chan. He asked, looking at her hopefully. The blue net blinked, before looking wondrously at Naruto. Why why you were using too much chakra? It was Naruto's turn to blink. Too much. But I'm barely using any. Hinata shook her head. And Naruto-kun you have an enormous amount of CH chakra you're using the same amount that would be a Q quarter of my entire chakra pool. Naruto gawked at her. Really so, I just have too much chakra he grinned ear to ear. That means that I could easily use all those advanced techniques Aruka sensei was talking about. Hinata shook her head again, tugging at her jacket nervously. D don't you are remember what I Aruka sensei said about th those techniques. Naruto racked his brain, trying to recall the words the Chuanin had imparted on them. If you use a higher level technique and don't know how to control, you can lose all your chakra since it leeches it rapidly he said, furrowing his brow. That means that I couldn't use the better ones either. 
ugh, the Nada's expression grew worried as his smile marred itself into a frown. B but that D doesn't mean we can't D2 chakra C control exercises. She said hurriedly, pushing herself to her feet. His eyes traveled to hers, a familiar hopeful fierceness in them. She felt her face flush from the intense look, and she directed her gaze at her fingers, which began to prod each other. Naruto nodded at her, giving an embarrassed laugh. Man, I really am hopeless, eh? You have to train me in everything, jutsu to jutsu don't even get me started on weapons. He said with a look of someone with a bad taste in their mouth. It earned him a giggle from the brunette, which he took happily. The H that's also not completely true and Naruto-kun. She said, giving him a determined smile. Why you're helping me a lot too. Naruto looked at her, confusion evident on his face. She continued on, your e endurance is incredible, Naruto-kun. Just sparring with you I is a hard W workout in itself because you G go for so long. Plus every tea time you make me have to B block one of your strikes, I it's hard because you're so S strong. It's helped my S strength too, plus I T train longer because I want to help you. She finished, looking at her feet in slight embarrassment. In the week they had trained together, she had made progress with being able to say everything on her mind to Naruto. She welcomed the change, slightly upset with herself that she had never found the courage to approach him before, but wanting to make up for lost time now. Naruto smiled, a small genuine smile, and Hinata felt her head floating in the clouds. It was so nice to see him smile like that. And it was at her. Okay, Hinata-chan. He said, his voice softer than normal. We'll keep training together to get really strong. She nodded, sensing his unwavering determination. She also noticed something else though, something coupled with his fierce conviction. Hinata-chan he began, and his tone worried her. It was full of apprehension and nervousness. What was he about to say? They are no H Hinata Chan will yabba me friend. He shouted, before looking pointedly at the ground. She blinked, putting his words together in her head. Why your FF friend, Naruto kun? She asked, wondering why he had even asked the question. Of course she was his friend. She considered him above a friend, he was her source of determination and readiness, her reason for trying. Why she could make the choices to not give up and keep going when her younger self would have simply quit. He had mistook her meaning again, however, and looked like he wanted to hide away somewhere secluded. I mean of course not forget I said anything it's okay. His eyes widened in shock as he suddenly felt a pair of arms encircle his form in a hug. It was a foreign feeling but not unwelcome. Oh of course I'll be 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 why your f friend and Naruto-kun, he heard Hinata's words ring through his mind and he felt the corners of his lips tug up again into another true smile. He circled his arms around her waist hesitantly, not wanting to scare her off, but her arms only seemed to tighten. He could feel heat radiating from her face, which was buried in his chest, but didn't note it as anything important. The only thing that mattered to him in this moment was that he had made a friend. A true friend. Several weeks later, Naruto grunted as Hinata's palm slammed into his side, almost making him lose concentration of the two leaves that were stuck to the palms of his hand via chakra. He dodged her next strike, before arcing into a long backflip that put some distance between the two. The blue net wasted no time in charging him, however, not giving him any space to breathe. They had been at it for almost 45 minutes, and while Naruto was using chakra to both keep the leaves in place and to enhance his limbs to assist him in dodging the swift strikes coming at him, he still wasn't anywhere close to fatigue. The Hyuga heiress, however, was another story entirely. She fell back onto her rear, panting as she did so. While the exercise they were doing wasn't terribly exhausting, after five previous hours of grueling training, it was hard to keep going. She fell back, letting her head rest on the grass as she inhaled the scent of the forest. Her eyes opened to see Naruto watching her with a little concern, and she felt the familiar signs of a blush start to creep into her cheeks. You okay Hinata-chan? He asked, still keeping the leaves stuck to himself. She nodded, still taking in deep breaths to replenish the oxygen in her blood. He nodded, flashed her a grin, and leaped into the forest, likely sprinting from tree to tree as was their custom whenever she became too tired to continue. Not only was he training his legs to kick faster and building his endurance, but the constant weaving through the branches forced him to focus on finding a safe path, making it that much harder to keep the leaves from unsticking and falling, especially with the wind attempting to rip them from the blonde's hands. Anada gazed up at the cloudless sunny sky, thinking with admiration at how far they especially he had progressed in the short amount of time they had begun training together. His bunshin were still horrid, but as Naruto had told Hinata that he was barely able to use the smallest amount he could, and after informing him that it was still well over 20 times the amount she used to create hers, they had decided to wait on it to see if they could find a better solution. His chakra control, however, had still increased dramatically, and he had almost mastered the other two of the academy's jutsu. 
he had taken to the henge fairly quickly, likely due to his prankster nature, and after Hinata had suggested he could use the substitution to escape especially sticky situations and get away from the Chuanin who were usually after him more readily, he had taken to it with just as much enthusiasm. His tojutsu was improving by leaps and bounds as well, not only had he almost mastered his style due to his almost constant using of it during training, but the blows were much swifter than before, as well as retaining their devastating power. Had Hinata not taken to her own training with as much ferocity as he had his, she was sure that she wouldn't be able to keep up with him. As it was though, as much as she tried to remain the superior one, if only to have him admire her a little longer and be able to help him more, he was catching up quickly. His otherworldly stamina let him continue training when most humans would be expected to drop from exhaustion, and it certainly had its advantages when it came to gaining strength. In their spars, Hinata now had to pour every ounce of her will into beating him, and while she hadn't lost yet, there were a few very close calls. He had delightedly pointed this out to her the first time it happened, but a cute pout later and he was apologizing, promising to never tease her about it again. She had giggled shyly at that, which had elicited a pout of his own, causing her to blush. She inhaled slowly through her nose, letting her lungs expand to their full capacity, before letting the breath out slowly. The next Ijutsu tournament was coming up soon, another single elimination one-on-one -on -one style. She hoped that they wouldn't have to fight each other, as she wanted to show him that his friendship wasn't being wasted on someone weak. She cringed slightly at her own thought Naruto wasn't so shallow as to care about the individual strength of someone he cared about. Just that they offered their companionship and saw him as an individual of worth and not like something nasty they had stepped in. She still couldn't help but feel as if she needed to be strong, however. He deserved someone strong to be at his side. Naruto came pelting back into the clearing, flipping forward before skidding along the ground on his feet. His eyes were closed in concentration, and as he opened them, he looked into his palms hopefully. Yada. He yelled, jumping and punching the air. The leaves had remained in their respective places on his palms, he had tree sprinted for at least 10 minutes without letting them fall. Anada smiled shyly at him, sitting up. Gee good job and Naruto-kun. She said warmly, relishing in the glowing look her gave her. It's really all thanks to you, Hinata-chan. He said, scratching the back of his and offering her a smile of gratitude. I would have never thought to do half of this stuff if I was still by myself. Anada shook her head, poking her fingers together as she glanced down with a blush. Th that's not. Naruto nodded sagely, crossing his arms. Oh yes it is. You should take more credit for your actions Hinata-chan, you've really helped me come a long way, you know. My best friend rocks. He finished, offering her a thumbs up with a cheesy smile. She giggled cutely, before a small snort escaped her. Her eyes widened, and her cheeks flushed crimson. Oh god, did he hear? Her answer came preemptively from the whiskered boy as he rolled on the ground, clutching his stomach. Hinata puffed her cheeks out cutely and looked at him pleadingly, but it seemed like he really couldn't stop laughing. She huffed and crossed her arms, turning away as her face glowed red. How embarrassing. Abruptly the laughing stopped, and her head whipped back around, confused at the sudden change in noise. He was looking alarmed and scared. I am sorry Hinata-chan, I didn't mean to upset you, I've just never heard that before he said rapidly, obviously trying to get his explanation out in fear that is self-proclaimed, but true nonetheless, best friend was truly mad at him. She smiled in slight embarrassment. It's oh okay Naruto-kun, I j just felt a little embarrassed is all, I I'm not mad. Naruto's mood brightened again, and she could almost swear that his happiness depended on her view of him. Almost. Alright then. I'm gonna do a hundred push-ups, sit-ups, squats, and pull-ups, before we start doing chakra control again. Anada blanched a little she was absolutely exhausted. But she wouldn't argue with him, not when he was so determined to get stronger. She could take a little exhaustion for him without thinking. He seemed to be a tad more perceptive than before, however, because he squinted at her accusingly. Hey hey, Hinata-chan, are you feeling tired? He asked, a serious undertone to his voice. She shook her head rapidly, not wanting to disappoint him, but the look of hurt that flashed through his eyes caused her breath to hitch in her throat. He looked down and she heard him murmur, in a quiet voice. Please don't lie to me I hate liars, she felt her throat constrict and tears spring to her eyes. She was damned if she did, and damned if she didn't either he would hate her for lying to him or look down on her for disappointing him. Just like her father used to. She nodded once, not trusting her voice, and looked up to see Naruto smiling sadly at her. It's okay he said, sitting on the grass across from her. I don't mind doing the exercises myself. I'm not gonna be mad or anything if you want to stop because you're tired, I know that not many people can train as long or as hard as me, old man Hokage said it himself. He finished, giving her a foxy grin. She nodded and wiped some tears from her eyes. Just don't lie to me, please. He said in a pleading voice, his expression lost and hurt. There was this time someone said they'd adopted me from the orphanage when I was little. 
the orphanage never treated me right, so I was so happy that someone both wanted to take me away from them and to take me into their home. I'd never been in a house before and I couldn't wait to get there. I told them how much I was looking forward to calling him my family, maybe even my dad. Inada watched as Naruto's eyes tightened, as if trying to recall something far off. It was easy to see he remembered exactly what had happened though. They led me into this building it didn't look like a house to me and I told him I wanted to go home. He hit me then I didn't say anything else. I was scared. I didn't want to lose the only person to ever take me in. But he led me to a room full of others and he cut off his recollection painfully, giving her a haunting look. So please don't lie to me again. Okay Hinata-chan. He asked in a pleading tone. She nodded again, not sure she could form coherent words at the emotions that were running rampant through her system. Anger, empathy, sadness, rage the want to hurt those who hurt Naruto. No, the need to crush anyone that put him in pain. She tentatively scooched closer to him, holding her arms out, as if asking permission to hug him. The corners of his mouth tugged vertically into a sad smile, and he embraced her small frame, grateful for the comfort. I won't let anyone hurt you ever again Naruto-kun she thought, squeezing his small frame. I promise. That'll be a hard promise to keep, Hinata-chan, because a lot of people want to hurt me. Naruto voice came from above her head. With a jolt, the brunette realized that she had been speaking aloud, and the blush that adorned her face from her unknowing confession was truly something to behold. I I I less still try and my be best she stuttered out, burying her glowing face into his chest. She felt him nod and lay back onto the grass, bringing her small frame with him. In that case, I'll protect you too. He said with conviction after a short time had passed. She could not hear him, however. She was asleep with her head on his chest, a peaceful smile adorning her face. He glanced down and smiled at her, as well as flushing a little red. He never had anyone sleep on him before. It was different. But he thought sleepily, closing his eyes as the sunshine warmed his entire being. Not bad, let's get started. I won't let anyone hurt you ever again Naruto-kun she thought, squeezing his small frame. I promise. That'll be a hard promise to keep, Hinata-chan, because a lot of people want to hurt me. Naruto voice came from above her head. With a jolt, the brunette realized that she had been speaking aloud, and the blush that adorned her face from her unknowing confession was truly something to behold. I I I less still try and my be best she stuttered out, burying her glowing face into his chest. She felt him nod and lay back onto the grass, bringing her small frame with him. In that case, I'll protect you too. He said with conviction after a short time had passed. She could not hear him, however. She was asleep with her head on his chest, a peaceful smile adorning her face. He glanced down and smiled at her, as well as flushing a little red. He never had anyone sleep on him before. It was different. But he thought sleepily, closing his eyes as the sunshine warmed his entire being. Not bad. Naruto let his forehead fall on his desk, lifted it, and repeated his previous action. This lecture on the founding of Kanoha was going to drive him mad if he continued listening to it for much longer. It didn't pertain to training at all. He gave a small whimper as a slender shoulder bumped his gently, an action that conveyed Hinata's silent request for him to pay attention. Why did she want to torture him? He gave her a gigantic pout before sitting up straight, looking as if it was taking a great effort to do so. Hinata glanced sideways at him, giggling. This dream might not make him into a better fighter, but having him listen might raise his patience a bit. She noticed he liked to run recklessly into his fights and was hoping to instill a little tact into him. She couldn't have him charge a skilled shinobi and died due to overconfidence, no matter how good he got. She couldn't risk him. After the lecture ended, they were let out early with the promise that they would train themselves. Instead of heading to their usual spot, the pair decided to stay on the academy's training grounds to utilize their practice sets of ninja tools, as well as their expansive target range. They each grabbed a set of kunai and shuriken, as well as some senbon. Naruto had actually suggested the latter as part of a plan he had. Once they got proficient with one set of weapons, they would work their way to the next. It never hurt to be able to pick up and throw anything found on the battlefield with deadly precision, after all. Plus it got boring to throw the same weapon, again and again. A change of pace was pleasant. Naruto and Hinata stood side by side, their eyes closed. As if by some signal, both of their eyes snapped open at once, letting their kunai fly. Hinata tossed five of them in a single throw, watching the wide arc hit several targets near dead center. She immediately began alternating throwing with each of her hands, hitting targets further and further away, before they started straying from the center of the wooden targets. She nodded to herself, this was her current limit for kunai then. She glanced over at Naruto's set of targets, the blonde having the same exercise as her. His initial fan throw was mostly accurate, only one straying to the outside edge of the bull's eye. He had come a long way in the past few months of their training. Further down range was another story, however. Well he had consistently hit bull's eyes for about 25 meters, past that he had started slipping. 
That paled a little in comparison to her 40 meters of precision throwing, but was still impressive. He wouldn't take it kindly though. Man, you still outthrow me easily Hinata-chan. Naruto grimaced, looking at his sloppy aim downrange. I really need to work on these stupid things. Why you'll get better, Naruto-kun. She said with confidence, offering him a small smile. He returned it with gusto, gripping four shuriken between each of his fingers. I'm a lot better with these, you better be ready. He exclaimed, taking careful aim. Hinata was about to respond in the affirmative when a small clearing of a throat reached her ears. Naruto's ears twitched at the foreign sound and they both turned to greet their onlooker. A disgruntled and slightly embarrassed looking Sasuke stood with his hands in his pockets, his gaze directed at the ground. Naruto blinked, his face filled with a sort of surprise, but Hinata's eyes narrowed, her grip on her shuriken becoming a little tighter. Oh uh, what's up Sasuke? Naruto said awkwardly, obviously confused as to why the Achiha prodigy was paying them a visit. Sasuke glanced up at Naruto, his eyes quickly flickering to Hinata. He spotted her threatening gaze and dropped his eyes back down. Naruto he began in a low voice, checking to see if anyone was watching. I just wanted to well I suppose he took a deep breath before looking straight at him with conviction in his eyes. I talked to Itachi Niasen about what happened and he said that you would make a good friend and rival, so I'm here to apologize for looking down on you before. Naruto stood stone still, his eyes wide from shock. He hadn't expected this, not without beating the jerk in a fight at least. A grin came to his face nonetheless, was he already gaining another friend. Fate was being unusually kind to him. Hinata's look of shock was quickly mingled with that of suspicion. They had barely interacted since the sparring tournament four months previous and his sudden apology had her on edge. After all, how many people had attempted to draw Naruto into a false sense of security before sometimes literally stabbing him in the back? Sasuke saw Hinata's cold eyes boring into his and he shivered. He looked at her pleadingly, his body conveying vulnerability. Please, Hinata-san, I mean what I say. I, I look up to my big brother very much. He said that he's seen Naruto training and expects him to become a great shinobi one day and urged me to set aside my grudge of of you beating me as badly as you did. It took a while but I think I've finally gotten past my own arrogance he finished, flinching as he did so. Someone else's words seemed to be playing on repeat in his head, torturing the youth slightly. Hinata's gaze melted a little and became tolerant. Naruto wiped a stray tear from his eye, extending his shuriken free fist to Sasuke. If we're gonna be friends, you'd better not lie to me or Hinata-chan, got it. Hinata saw with satisfaction that while he was a tad overwhelmed with emotion, he still kept in mind all those times the offer wasn't as genuine. Sasuke nodded, a small smile resting on his face, and he punched Naruto's fist lightly with his own. Naruto turned around, punching the air with jagged metal. Alright. Let's get back to it Hinata-chan, we have another person to get strong for. You're the only person I'll ever want to get strong for, Naruto-kun. She thought earnestly, but raised her shuriken as well. As before, they let them fly at the same time, throwing fist after fist of the spinning stars. Hinata watched as her groups connected in the bull's eye, time and time again, her accuracy waning slightly before that of her kunai. Naruto's however, his eyes widened as he double and triple checked the scene before him. He clenched his fists tightly, and Sasuke, watching with slight concern, saw an intense expression on his face. Suddenly he burst out, a gigantic smile his most prominent feature. E. I finally beat Hinata-chan at something. He shouted, jumping repeatedly as his energy levels reached critical. Sasuke blinked. Hinata was the best in their class at just about everything, there was no way. As he looked downrange, however, he found that the blonde was telling the truth. The target where Hinata had begun to lose accuracy, she had stuck three shuriken neatly in the center, with one trailing off to the side where it stuck just outside the bull's eye. The one after that was a similar story, with two trailing out. Both of the targets on Naruto's side, however, had four stars jutting out of each of those red centers, the one after being where he started to hit off center. Sasuke looked at the pair of them wondrously. How had they progressed so fast? Sasuke had sneered at the first attempt Naruto made with his weaponry, throwing so wildly that Iruka had put him a little aside to ensure he didn't hit anyone else's targets on accident. Now though, he doubted that he could hit even two at the range Naruto was hitting all four dead accurate. Hinata was practically glowing. Naruto had done it. It was a sign of real progress that he had thrown so accurately. Granted, if she had used her Byakugan, she could have thrown with more precision, but it was an unfair advantage in her eyes, literally, so she neglected to use it for now. She certainly had to train her eyes for longer use and vision, and now that Naruto was catching up to her in the weapons department, she figured the next time they threw, he would be in for a little bit of an unpleasant surprise. Sasuke's cough took them both out of their individual musings, Naruto looking at him with joy on his face, Hinata with polite, yet slightly agitated, curiosity. Uh he began, eliciting a raised eyebrow from the blue net. 
He usually tried to carry himself coolly, most likely trying to emulate his sibling he cared about so much. He looked awkward as he pulled at a stray string on his shorts. How how did you guys get so strong? He finally asked, looking at them with a sort of repressed awe. Naruto blinked, then shrugged. We train a lot. He said simply. I train a lot too. Sasuke retorted, looking more confused than ever. I don't take a day off, normally. It's the only way I can ever hope to catch up to Itachi Niacin. Naruto tilted his head. So you train to get strong enough to protect him. Sasuke's confused look grew ever more so. He doesn't need protecting, he's the strongest person I know. Well. Naruto said, a serious look crossing his face. I want to get stronger to protect Hanada-chan, old man Hokage, Iruka-sensei, and anyone else that becomes precious to me. He said, flashing a smile at Sasuke. I guess you fall into that category now too, huh? Sasuke still looked as lost as ever. You fight to protect your friends. Naruto nodded, glancing at Hanada. Especially Hanada-chan. She's done so much for me, and if I could use all my power to save her, while not saving myself, I'd do it for sure. Hanada looked sharply at him, opening her mouth as if to protest, but his sincere smile made her shut it with a blush, causing her to look down, prodding her fingers together. Sasuke looked down, processing what he'd heard. The power to save someone. To protect your friends. Is that what you have, Itachi Nai? The want to protect me? Sasuke nodded slowly, looking up at the two of them. I'd like to train with you. Naruto's smile widened, but Hinata's look of disappointment wasn't lost to him. She obviously valued the time she got alone with him. Don't worry, it won't be all the time. He added, smiling at Hinata. She nodded, giving Naruto a sideways look. It wasn't hard to tell who she fought for. Sasuke hit the ground with a groan, clutching his stomach as he grit his teeth. Naruto grinned sheepishly at him, but didn't drop his fighting stance. Sorry Sasuke, but I've already been chastised once about pulling punches against a friend. Naruto said, a bit of regret in his voice. Sasuke nodded, getting up slowly. Just wasn't ready for it, I guess. I really need to stop underestimating you. He said, smirking slightly. Naruto grinned back. In the week Sasuke had joined in their training sessions, he had sparred with Naruto daily. Unlike their first fight, Sasuke had not even come close to winning any of their duels. Sasuke rushed him, feigning a sweeping kick and rapidly circling him to land a hard punch to his kidney. Naruto reacted quickly, moving just enough to avoid the punch, turning to drive an elbow into the Ichiha's chest. Sasuke dodged backwards, landing on one foot and kicking off hard, looking to ram into the blonde stomach with his shoulder. He turned as the boy leapt over him, catching his foot that was intended to strike his back. He thought he had gotten the blonde, but his eyes widened as he was flung forward, the entire leg acting as a catapult to rocket him towards a tree. He cursed and swung his body sideways, gripping the trunk to swing himself around the tree, carrying his momentum into a straight kick aimed for the blonde. He had hoped that Naruto was still recovering from the effort he had put into his throw, but that hope was for naught. Naruto grabbed Sasuke's extended leg and, before he had time to react to it, slammed him to the ground. Sasuke felt the breath leave his body and he gasped, rolling onto his side trying to catch his breath. Hey, sorry again. Naruto said, kneeling by his friend. I did try and make that last hit not super hard. Just fast enough to prevent you from countering it. He gave a cheeky grin. Anada sent a slightly disapproving look his way, but said nothing. She knew that the raven-haired Achiha would not have been able to escape Naruto's toss, so she didn't pursue the subject. After Sasu caught his breath, he stood shakily. Man, I can't believe I haven't been able to hurt you even a little all week. He brushed some dirt off his clothes before giving Naruto a smile. I think training in you two this week has helped me progress much faster than I would have otherwise. I think I'll give you two some time to train alone though. I know where my weaknesses lie and I've gotta work on them if I wanna beat you." Naruto nodded, a proud smile on his face as he wrapped his knuckles against those of Sasuke's. I hope you do. If I get stronger than everyone, who's gonna give me an Hinata-chan competition? Sasuke smirked, choosing not to reply as he exited the clearing, one hand up in a silent goodbye. Naruto turned to Hinata, who had watched their exchange with a smile. While she had been extremely apprehensive about letting the boy into their group of two, worried he would continue to look down at Naruto despite his word to his brother, he had surprised her, taking to their training regime without a single complaint, even going so far as to offer his encouragement to Naruto. It was obvious he was unused to such words, since it had come out awkward, but to Naruto it made no difference. Any form of kindness was golden in his books, and she was glad to see the positive effect it made on both Naruto's attitude and his training. Naruto stood smiling gently at the spot where Sasuke had disappeared into the forest. You know, he said, after some thought, when you get to know him, he's not that much of a jerk. Just feels like he has a lot to live up to, you know. It doesn't help that he has every single girl in the class trying to get his attention either Naruto made a sour face at the end, one that Hinata didn't smile at. 
she looked towards her feet, pushing her pointer fingers together. Then Naruto kun do you do you w wish they paid attention to why why you instead? She muttered quietly, slightly ashamed at her question. She knew his answer, or thought she did, but wanted to hear him say the words. She could be selfish sometimes, right? Her eyes flickered to him in slight fear as he hesitated to answer. She could see a mixture of emotions in his eyes, but couldn't pinpoint any of them. Well if you would have asked me that when we first got to the academy, I would have said yes. He said, and his face set into a look of loneliness. Hinata hated that look. But I've got you. He said simply, lifting his gaze to hers to smile dazzlingly at her. Her breath hitched. I I am not worth em much she blurted out, averting her eyes from his now angry gaze. Don't you ever say that Hinata-chan. He said fiercely, walking to her and placing his hands on her shoulders firmly. Ever. You're worth more than the whole of those stupid fangirls combined. Hinata shivered at the contact and at the words that left his mouth. He found more worth in her than a dozen other girls. A few were much prettier than her as well. Sure, she might have done more to earn her place at his side than them, she never saw them getting shop owners ostracized for mistreating the shunned blonde. Her view of Naruto was too pure though, even for herself. In her eyes, no one earned the right to walk by his side as an equal, only behind him as a follower or a supporting friend. Besides, Naruto said after a short pause, grinning as her pulled her into a hug that enveloped her tiny frame. None of them come even close to your strength. You're the only girl I want to pay attention to me, Hinata-chan. This last comment, combined with the complete warmth that was Naruto's embrace, was a little too much for the brunette, and she blissfully passed out in his arms, an elegant smile on her slumbering face. Themes of three. Haruka called out over the excited murmurs. They were going to a field exercise today learning to identify edible food in the wild. Haruka had been initially surprised, a few weeks earlier, when their first group training event had yielded a Chuha Sasu teaming up with Naruto and Hinata, but it had become quickly apparent to him that Naruto had taken his advice seriously. He was very happy as a mentor to the young boy and had enjoyed seeing him come out of his shell to the two clan members. He watched as the three of them silently hovered together in the back of the class, also eyeing the multiple girls who were throwing dirty looks at the group. He was surprised to see that just as many were being thrown at Hinata as Naruto, and he attributed it to her being the top student in the class. They were also probably assuming that Sasuke was gravitating towards her due to her prowess, and in part they were right. But friendship is rarely so simple. Deciding that he would have to be unpopular for the day, Hiruka made a quick decision. Now, I see many groups consisting of the same people. I want you all to try and swap at least one member out. Remember, you don't get a say in who you get teamed up with when you all hopefully graduate in a few years, so it's in your best interest to branch out and become friends with as many people as possible. Naruto's cry of outrage was mimicked by several others, but Aruka quieted them with a stern look. There will be many times you will be paired with different shinobi of different strengths for the various missions you will go on down the road. He said wisely, learning to adapt and work with peers of different skill sets will help you adapt when it really matters, life or death situations do not always come around when you're with your closest friends. None of the students looked happy, but the majority of them looked like they had at least understood his point. Grumbling, many students began to swap around, though no one ventured towards Naruto's group. Sasuke looked irritated as he gave them a small wave, looking around desperately for a group that didn't contain a female calling to him with hearts in her eyes. Naruto put his head down on the desk he was sitting at, grumbling incoherently. This day had started off so well, and now some random student was going to get thrown on their team and most likely shun him the entire time. To his surprise though, he saw a young boy with sunglasses make his way up to their table, the lower portion of his face hidden by his collar. Hello, Yuzumaki-san, hi Uga-san. Would either of you mind my presence on your team for this exercise? He asked, his voice stoic. Naruto blinked. Oh, uh, not at all. He said, sounding unsure of himself. Hinata shook her head as well, her eyes not leaving the newcomers. Ah, uh, she know, right. Shino nodded, noticing Hinata's none too subtle stare down. That is correct. Do not worry, I do not mean either of you ill will. I was, perhaps, wondering if you knew the reason everyone treats you with such hostility, Yuzumaki san. Naruto shook his head, his face glum. If I knew I'd try and do something to fix it, but I really don't. Trust me, I'd like to know too. Shino nodded, before turning curtly to address Hinata. Hi Uga-san, I'd like you to understand that I bear Yuzumaki-san no negative feelings. I understand why you are defensive, but I would like, if possible, for us all to get along. Hinata stared at the stoic boy for a minute longer, her eyes searching for any hint of deceit in his face. As a high Uga, and especially as the heiress to her clan, she had long since began training to read people's faces and emotions. Although no master, she could almost always get a decent read on the general mood of people and knew the telltale signs of liars. Seeing none, she nodded tightly, still not certain about the whole thing. 
similar to Sasuke, they had barely any previous interaction with Shino, and she was hesitant to welcome him with open arms. Shino pushed his glasses further up the bridge of his nose, silently acknowledging Hinata's grudging acceptance into their group. Excellent. Should we get going then? I believe we have a ways to walk to the actual side of our training. Naruto nodded enthusiastically, pulling Hinata up, and he leapt to his feet. Despite her hesitance in getting up, she did so immediately at the blonde's contact with her, blushing slightly in the process. Even if Naruto wasn't worried, she had to be. Enough for both of them, lest he get hurt again. Naruto chattered excitedly all the way to their destination, which turned out to be the very same training ground that Naruto called his home away from home. Shino had listened closely to the babble, voicing his opinions on various things when Naruto had no choice but to take a moment and breathe. Hinata had listened to, but didn't respond to anything. She was too absorbed in thought, at war with herself. If Naruto trusted someone, she should be trusting them as well. At the same time, it had gotten him hurt before, so she should really be more cautious when it came to people claiming to be friendly. Which was the right answer. Aruka cleared his throat loudly, catching the attention of all the young students on the edge of the wood. Now, I want all the groups to fan out and begin collecting various plants that you think can be used as food. I'll be monitoring and offering assistance if you need it, so there's no need to worry. Is everyone ready? Upon receiving a loud chorus of yes and say, he clapped his hands. All right then, off you go. Naruto, Hinata, and Shino all leapt towards the clearing Naruto and Hinata trained together in, the former sprawling out on the grass as they reached their destination. Ah, this is great. Almost like we get to spend the school day at home, right Hinata-chan? He joked. Hinata smiled, nodding. It was nice to be in a familiar place. Shino looked up at the clear blue sky. It was a nice day, and they had plenty of time to gather the food. He laid back, next to Naruto, feeling his hive's gentle buzz. They enjoyed the warmth just as much as him. Hey Shino. Naruto spoke from beside him. Yes, Yuzumaki-san. Shino replied, causing a grimace to appear on the blonde's face. Le, stop calling me that. He said, stretching his back. Man, it was nice out. Just call me Naruto. Shino nodded after a second, filing the important information away in his mind. My apologies, Naruto-san. You don't need to apologize, jeez, and Naruto-san. Oh whatever. Naruto glanced over at him. Why don't you see me like everyone else does? Shino turned his head, his expression unchanging. Why should I? Naruto opened his mouth, but no noise came out. He furrowed his eyebrows. Huh? What I mean to say is, you have not wronged me. Therefore I don't see any need to be upset or angry at you. It's as simple as that. Naruto blinked, before looking even more confused. But if it's that simple, he said, his voice showing frustration. Why does everyone else hate me? I didn't do anything to any of them. Shino shrugged. Could it possibly be due to the graffiti and pranks I hear my clansmen discussing occasionally? Naruto shook his head, his eyes downcast. The only reason I started any of that was to get people to notice me, maybe laugh at something I did. At least then they'd acknowledge I was there. Shino's eyebrows furrowed as well, something quite rare for the calm Aburum. If that's the case I do not know. I will inquire with my father further to try to get that answered. Naruto looked around at Shino, astonishment on his face. Ah really? You do that for me? Shino nodded, his mouth twitching as if he wanted to smile. I am just as curious as you, but I suppose it is for you, in a way. Naruto grinned broadly, looking back up at the cerulean sky. Thank you Shino. I think we'll be good friends. Friends Shino replayed the simple word in his head. Not many people openly pursued or accepted friendship with an aburum, due to their secluded nature and the hives of insects they contained within their bodies. The villagers shunned them, although not disrespectfully, and fellow shinobi acknowledged their strength, but few associated with them on close personal levels. Shino smiled, the action hidden by his jacket. The news of his new friendship would please his father, he was sure. After an hour of napping in the clearing, the three were caught by an irritated Aruka, who chastised them for slacking off. Naruto huffed at this, picking up and popping a mushroom into his mouth in front of the mortified Aruka, claiming that food wasn't hard to find. Then Naruto. Aruka stammered, his face going pale. That mushroom is extremely poisonous. Naruto blinked, his face screwing up in confusion. What? But I eat those all the time, I don't always have time to shop for groceries, you know. Naruto proved his point by grabbing the mushroom's twin and popping that into his mouth too, shuddering. I hate vegetables though. Aruka was sputtering, his face the color of paper. That's not how can mushrooms are a fungus. He bellowed, bending over and breathing heavily. Naruto looked at him like he was about to go mad. Geez Aruka sensei you really need to calm down. Naruto said, holding his hands up in a placating manner. His sensei could get really worked up sometimes. Aruka took a closer look at Naruto, waiting to see the symptoms of the these dangerous fungi. 
No swelling of the throat, no constricted airways he's not dizzy, no bleeding from any orifices, is he really immune to these things? He thought, looking bewildered. It seems so, however, because Naruto stood staring at him, his hesitant look still in place. Well, Naruto. Haruka sighed. It looks like you have natural resistances to poison. I wouldn't urge you to try this on any other of the poisonous plants in the forest, but I've already eaten everything in here at least once. Naruto interrupted, placing his hands behind his head. Iruka blanched, bringing a hand to pinch the bridge of his nose. I'll have to inform Hokage-sama about this. Naruto, you're exempt from this exercise, and I don't want you passing any help to your team. He said, causing the blonde to look outraged. He placed a patient hand up, indicating he still had the floor to speak. That mushroom you ate just now would have killed most anyone else within 10 minutes. He said, watching Naruto's face grow sick. Do you want to be the reason one of your friends eat something poisonous because you say it's okay, only for them to die minutes later? Naruto shook his head rapidly, worried eyes flashing towards Hinata. Hiroka nodded solemnly, his point had gotten across. Good. I want you to do some personal training then, are you too fine to finish the exercise? He turned to Hinata and Shino, and seeing both of them nod, he turned away. Excellent. I'll be back in half an hour to check on your progress. He said, leaping away. Once out of sight, he dropped his hands into a tiger seal, watching as a shadow clone poofed to life before his eyes. Watch over the students here, you already know where I'm going. He said politely, leaping away towards the Hokage Tower. And you're sure of this, Hiroka. The Sandame Hokage, Saratobi Hirazan, sat in his chair facing the village, a smoking pipe perched in between his lips. The smoke wafted towards the ceiling lazily, helping to calm the aged leader. He was, as he often stated, too old for this. However, the village needed a leader, someone strong to look to, and he was the only sane candidate, especially after the death of the Yandame. Yes, Hokage-sama. Hiroka said, his features twisted in worry. Like I said, I've noticed small cuts and bruises and wet net healing at an accelerated rate, but thought nothing of it. This time though, it was apparent. The Kyubi's chakra seems to be influencing Naruto's body, although it seems like it's only a ridiculous healing factor at this point. For him to be able to ingest the Shinigami mushroom itself though he shook his head. Do you think shinobi made poison will have any effect? Saratobi thought for a moment, the smoke rolling around his hokage hat. I think, he began thoughtfully, that if it is a chakra targeting poison, it may have some effect. As for those that directly target his biology, I think that the Kaiubi's chakra will eliminate the enzymes before they have a chance to damage his body's organs. It does certainly seem like an advantage. He said, giving a small chuckle, reading Aruka like a book. You didn't get this far without learning how to read people, after all. But alas, there is still the curse that comes with it. Aruka nodded, seeming lost for any idea towards a new conversation. Hiruzen took the opportunity to ask lightly, how is Naruto-kun? I haven't seen much of him lately, he used to stop by quite often. Haruka actually smiled at this. He's made several friends, Hokage-sama. Haruka said, obviously pleased he could report something not troubling. Hi Uga Hinata, Ichiha Sasuke, and Aburam Shino. The wise and shinobi nodded at the first name, having seen them together on several occasions himself. At the second name, however, he tensed slightly. The younger brother of Itachi. He asked, keeping the worry out of his voice. Hiroka nodded. The very same. I had suggested it to him, but I didn't actually imagine he's pulled Sasuke out of his shell. He's pretty dedicated to catching up to his brother, but I don't think anyone can. Do you? Saratobi shook his head, harsh memories of the latest secret meeting playing in his head. I would be hard-pressed to keep up with him. He said honestly, earning a look of surprise from Aruka. I think Kakashi would have equal trouble with him, but might be a bit more adept at it than I, due to his Sharingan. Aruka nodded at that. Kakashi had previously achieved the rank of Anbu captain at the youngest age yet, until Itachi had taken the record from him. They were both incredibly powerful ninja, and he couldn't say which of them would win if they had fought. Hiruzen, meanwhile, had troubling thoughts of his own. The peace talks aren't playing out as well as I'd hoped. He thought sadly. Itachi being forced to spy on your own family hopefully this can be resolved soon. Sometimes the hardest part of running a village was making the decisions that would harm and ostracize people that didn't deserve it. There, another chapter blasted out. I'm glad to say that I've topped 5k a chapter so far, and it feels comfortable. When we get to more battle-intensive scenes, the word count will probably jump a little more. On a side note, I finally watched Naruto. The last today. I wish the fights could have been a bit longer, but overall I fucking loved it. Gotta love that Naruhina. Hope you guys enjoyed the chapter, we'll be back soon. Aruka nodded, seeming lost for any idea towards a new conversation. Hiruzen took the opportunity to ask lightly, how is Naruto-kun? I haven't seen much of him lately, he used to stop by quite often. Aruka actually smiled at this. He's made several friends, Hokage-sama. 
Hiruka said, obviously pleased he could report something not troubling. Hi Uga Hinata, Ichiha Sasuke, and Aburam Shino. The wise and shinobi nodded at the first name, having seen them together on several occasions himself. At the second name, however, he tensed slightly. A younger brother of Itachi. He asked, keeping the worry out of his voice. Hiruka nodded. The very same. I had suggested it to him, but I didn't actually imagine he's pull Sasuke out of his shell. He's pretty dedicated to catching up to his brother, but I don't think anyone can. Do you? Tsuritobi shook his head, harsh memories of the latest secret meeting playing in his head. I would be hard pressed to keep up with him. He said honestly, earning a look of surprise from Aruka. I think Kakashi would have equal trouble with him, but might be a bit more adept at it than I, due to his Sharingan. Aruka nodded at that. Kakashi had previously achieved the rank of Anbu captain at the youngest age yet, until Itachi had taken the record from him. They were both incredibly powerful ninja, and he couldn't say which of them would win if they had fought. Hiruzen, meanwhile, had troubling thoughts of his own. The operation is supposed to take place in only a few days. I'm sorry Naruto it looks like you'll have to learn the pain of losing someone dear to you early on. He thought sadly. Sometimes the hardest part of running a village was making the decisions that would harm and ostracize people that didn't deserve it. And Naruto, definitely, didn't deserve it. Naruto stood very still, his face the very definition of concentration. It would work this time, it had to. Everything was riding on this one attempt at success. Okasi though, breathing slowly. His heart rate slowed, just enough that he could feel at least slightly calm about the situation. He grit his teeth, slapped his hands into the tiger seal, and, bunch and no jutsu, poof. A white, very papery-looking Naruto appeared before him, looking as if it had been drawn by a four-year-old. It made to raise its flimsy arms, before falling backward slowly. It hit the ground and disappeared with a pitiful puff of smoke, as Naruto stared at the spot it had vanished, his eyebrow twitching. Well, at least I could tell it was you, moron. Sasuke said jokingly, a smirk settling on his face. But it wasn't successful. You owe me and Hinata San Raymond. Naruto hung his head. He had bet Sasuke that with all the chakra control exercises he had done the past five months he had been training with Hinata, he could finally make a perfect clone. Needless to say, he had failed. I was looking forward to free Raymond too he said dully, imagining how flat his frog wallet would be after treating his two friends. Boy, cheer up. Sasuke said, shaking his head at the blonde's antics. It won't be long until you can make a clone. Naruto shook his head, drawing a surprised look from Sasuke. He'd never seen Naruto give up on anything, but he looked so dejected about this particular jutsu. I've been trying for so long, and I haven't really made much progress on it. I just don't know what to do he sighed, running a hand through his spiky blonde hair. Off to the side, Hinata watched him with concern in her eyes. This side of Naruto was usually one he didn't allow others to see. His self-doubt and apprehension weren't widely known, and while she should be happy that he trusted them enough to let them see it, she wasn't sure that she liked it. Then Naruto-kun, she called softly. Naruto turned his head towards her, still looking dejected. I know why you'll get it. She said, a strong conviction in her voice. Naruto blinked. How do you know that, Hinata-chan? He asked, still doubt in his voice. She shook her head slowly, her violet tresses falling around her face. I just did do. She replied, blushing slightly and poking her fingers together. Why you can do anything, Naruto Kanshi finished, hiding her face from sight. There was a pause before she looked back up, but when she did, Naruto was grinning broadly at her. Her breath caught in her throat, would she ever get used to seeing his smile like that at her? She doubted it. You're right, Hinata-chan. He said brightly, walking over to give her a hug. Sasuke watched her face go twenty shades darker, and he chuckled. It was always amusing to see the way Naruto affected Hinata. She could go from threatening powerhouse to a babbling pile of mush in less than a second. They look cute, don't you think so, Sasuke? Sasuke wheeled around, his eyes lighting up. Itachi Niasen. He exclaimed, walking quickly forward to embrace his elder sibling. Itachi smiled and returned the embrace, watching the other pair eye him curiously. You must be Naruto-kun. Itachi said, a smile playing on his features. And you, Hinata-san. They both nodded, and Naruto stepped forward. You're Sasuke's older brother? He asked, a certain light in his eyes. I heard you were really strong, you know. Itachi shrugged, his eyes gleaming playfully. That's what they like to tell me. He turned to Sasuke, and Sasuke truly looked at his brother's eyes. They looked tired, stressed, and worst of all, pained. He hadn't seen his brother in some time, what could have happened to force away the kindness that used to be ever-present? Itachi Niasen, are you okay? Sasuke said lowly, his voice full of concern. You look worn. Itachi's eyes widened for a fraction of a second before he assumed a downtrodden expression. It's Shisui he's dead. Sasuke's eyes widened. Shisui was Itachi's best friend. What? How? He asked, his tone conveying his anger and concern. 
Itachi allowed himself to smile. It is an unknown, but one I am investigating. He said, turning to address Naruto. But I didn't come to discuss my own hardships. I came to check on the progress of your guy's training. Naruto's entire face lit up as if he was just given a ticket to free Raymond for life at Ichiraku. Ah oh, really? Itachi chuckled as the young blonde jumped and punched the air, unable to contain his excitement. Yes, Naruto-kun. Now, I'd like you to show me your bunch of no jutsu. Naruto stopped dead in his tracks, an expression of terror etched onto his face. Oh oh, ah oh, Itachi-san. I know you're not adept at it, Naruto-kun, and there's nothing wrong with that. Itachi said patiently, giving Sasuke a meaningful look. We all have our strengths and weaknesses. Sasuke nodded, acknowledging the subliminal message, while Naruto gulped and put his hands into the familiar seal. Bunshin no Jutsu. The same ghostly Naruto appeared as before, except now Itachi was right next to it, examining it with strange red eyes. Naruto jumped back, he hadn't seen the older boy move at all. Holy crap is he fast he thought, seeing him eye his clone with interest. Itachi glanced at Hinata, his Dejutsu deactivating. I assume you've already told him he's using too much chakra. Hinata nodded tightly, her eyes wary. New people, especially powerful ones, didn't sit well with her. Her eyes flickered to Naruto, who seemed to cling to Itachi's every word. Itachi gave her a small smile and saw her relax slightly. Now then, Naruto-kun, are you truly using as little chakra as possible? Naruto nodded, looking confused. Itachi thought for a moment, his eyes shut, before glancing up at the still waiting blonde. Naruto-kun, I'm going to teach you a different version of the Bunshin Jutsu, one that I think you'll take better too. Naruto's face conveyed the same excitement as earlier at being taught by Elite Anbu, and he stood, shaking in place with pure joy. Sasuke looked at Naruto with obvious jealousy on his face. Itachi chuckled, poking Sasuke in the middle of his forehead with two fingers. Sasuke, you are not to use this jutsu until your future sensei gives you permission when you're out of the academy, got it? Sasuke looked at his brother in outrage, but Itachi raised a placating hand. I know that you've noticed Naruto's abnormally large chakra reserves. That is the only reason he will be able to use this jutsu. You have a long way to go before you build up your reserves enough to be able to use this. Try before, and you might kill yourself. He finished with a serious tone, looking at Hinata as well. She nodded, understanding the risks were just as strong for her. Itachi looked back at Naruto, who was jumping up and down in his excitement. Now, Naruto-kun, the clones you will be making are called shadow clones. They differ from regular clones, as they will appear with a body of their own, as real as you or I do to this, they take a great deal more chakra than the illusory clones, so not many shinobi can utilize them very well. When you use the technique, the clones you create will take equal parts of your chakra. Make too many clones, and you may not be left with enough chakra to live. That is the risk of the jutsu. Naruto nodded, running through all the information in his head. So if I make two clones, they each have a third of my chakra. Itachi nodded. Yes. Although, when dispelled, any chakra remaining in them will return to you. You must also remember that the more chakra you put into the clones, the sturdier they will be. Observe. Itachi made a hand sign, and instantly ten others of himself appeared in the clearing. Naruto gazed wondrously at them, his excitement beginning to take hold again. Itachi threw a single shuriken at each of the clones, and they all dispelled as the singular weapon struck them. Once again, Itachi made the sign to create a single clone. This time, when the shuriken struck the clone, it began to bleed, but didn't dispel. A swift strike to the neck did the job, however, and Itachi looked back to Naruto. He could see the gears turning in his head. So the more clones I make, the weaker they are. Naruto asked tentatively, scratching his head. Itachi smiled. Yes, although not physically. They will just be able to take less damage before dispelling. Itachi said, before looking thoughtful. I would also like you to keep in mind that when you begin nature manipulation down the road, you can infuse your clones with any chakra nature you are proficient in. This can create some devastating traps, ones that move and strike like you. Naruto nodded, feeling his excitement build with the elder Ichiha's every word. Alright. I'm ready. Itachi nodded as well, smiling softly at the young boy. Simply place your hands into a modified tiger seal as I did, gather your chakra as if you were creating a clone, and release the jutsu. Naruto nodded, placing his hands into the abnormal hand sign. He began building his chakra, his eyes closed in concentration. He slowly got what he felt was the right amount, and his eyes snapped open, a determined look in them. Page Bunshin no jutsu. He exclaimed, before a cloud of smoke enveloped the area surrounding him. Hinata squinted, eager to see if the new jutsu had worked out for the object of her admiration. As the smoke cleared, however, she didn't spot any other spiky blonde heads. Concerned, she started looking more closely, when, why is everyone so big, you know? A tiny voice rang out. Hinata looked down and spotted two tiny Naruto scratching their heads and looking up at everyone present. 
Naruto looked in disbelief at the two doll-sized clones he had made before yelling at them in a comical voice. Hey, why aren't you my size? It's not our fault you moron. Why didn't you make us bigger? Yeah, you trying to make fun of us. You looking to fight. The two tiny Naruto's began brandishing their fists at their creator, but before they could do anything, two gentle hands had swooped in and picked them up. W. They turned to see who had picked them up. They were met with pale eyes gazing at them, causing the two to smile bashfully. Hey, Hinata-chan, let us down. It's embarrassing, you know. One said, grinning. Hinata didn't say anything, but her eyes grew strange, and the real Naruto was giving her an odd look. Hinata-chan, he said with a questioning tone. She gave him a fierce look. These small Naruto's are just too cute. She said, her voice the epitome of seriousness. Naruto blinked, unsure of what to say to that. Hinata began to prod the small Naruto's, much to their playful displeasure. Itachi laughed a little at the spectacle, causing Naruto to whip back around to face him, flushing slightly with embarrassment. Eh sorry, Itachi-san, I didn't make you did well, Naruto-kun. Itachi said seriously, causing Naruto's face to twist into one of confusion. For your first attempt, those are good shadow clones. They resemble you in every way, I believe, and once you tweak how you actually gather and form the chakra, you'll have full-sized shadow clones at your disposal. Good job. He finished, smiling lightly at the blonde. Naruto nodded vigorously, his grin threatening to split his face in two. Thank you Itachi-san. Thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you. He finished, bounding forward to hug Itachi around the middle. Itachi chuckled again, patting the blonde's heading, before dislodging Naruto from around his waist. All of you, keep training hard. Itachi said, smiling at the three. Kanoha will always be a target to those jealous of our peace and prosperity. It will need strong shinobi to protect it, and you three must contribute to that strength. They all nodded, and Itachi leapt off, his thoughts much darker than his outside demeanor. Hinoha will always be a target even to those within the village. Sasuke you need to grow strong. So that someday you can avenge our parents and our clan. Sasuke sighed as he watched his brother leap off. Man, Itachi Nyasen barely teaches me any new jutsu. What makes you so special? He commented to Naruto, smiling as he did so. Naruto smiled back, but didn't speak. He went back to trying to create more shadow clones, and before he knew it, Hinata was now managing a small pile of different sized, but all miniature, Naruto's. Sasuke shook his head, bid farewell to his friends, and made his way home. The next few days were uneventful for the young shinobi attending the academy. Naruto had gotten his shadow clones to reach half his height now, and was slowly growing them by manipulating how he formed his chakra. Hinata was running 20 plus kilometers a day to assist in training her endurance, and Sasuke was working on both his physical speed and expanding his chakra reserves. After a particularly grueling training session, Sasuke lay on the ground panting, having performed five complete fire release great fireballs in a row. His previous limit had been three, with a meager fourth one, so his completion of five seemed a very large success. Sasuke and Hinata chastised, helping him to his feet. You really shouldn't work yourself into the ground. You'll get hurt, and then Naruto-kun will get worried. Sasuke grimaced, trying to hold himself up and failing to do so. He leaned on Hinata's shoulder, giving her an apologetic look. As if on cue, Naruto walked into the clearing with a clone three quarters of his size trotting after him, looking just as enthused. Hey guys. Look at how big they're Sasuke. Are you alright? Naruto asked, the clone dispelling. Sasuke nodded, giving the blonde a smirk. Of course, just used a bit too much chakra. I'm gonna head home and get some rest, we've been at it for hours out here. Naruto blinked, looking to the sky. It was already night, he hadn't realized it with how absorbed he was in mastering his jutsu. Oh man, you're right. Naruto said, a look of chagrin on his face. Crap, I just remembered that I told Aruka sensei I'd meet him for Raymond. Oh, Naruto-kun. Hinata said, smiling at him. Naruto looked up, reluctance in his eyes, but she shook her head. I it's okay, Naruto-kun. I'll H help him back to H his compound, you go eat W with Iruka sensei. Naruto furrowed his brows, but reluctantly nodded. He strode forward, giving Sasuke a fist bump and rumpling Hinata's hair like Itachi had done to him. He had enjoyed it enough, and Hinata didn't look like she hated it. She had ducked her head, a furious blush adorning her face. Naruto shrugged. That never was a bad sign, after all. Just a weird one he hadn't interpreted yet. Alright, I'll see you guys tomorrow he said, before turning and leaping off in the direction of Ichiraku. Thankfully, since the training ground they used was secluded, it was also nearby the Ichiha compound, which had been relocated to a remote corner of the village some five years previous. Sasuke and Hinata walked in comfortable silence, before Sasuke decided to break it, asking the question that had been nagging him for several weeks. Hey, Hinata-san he began, pausing until he received a sideways glance from the girl. Why do you try so hard for Naruto? To his surprise, she didn't react to his question at all. 
her eyes shifted back to the path in front of them, and Sasuke was about to think she would ignore his question when she began to speak. Naruto is the kindest, most determined person I know. She said softly, yet firmly. Sasuke glanced at her and saw the look she often adopted when the blonde-haired youth was involved. He never gives up, ever. You know he saved me, once. There were these boys who were picking on me because of my family. I was weak back then I still think I am now. She smiled, but it didn't seem to reach her eyes. But then especially so. They were about to beat me up a little, I think, when Naruto came to my rescue. He didn't even know me, but he challenged them and got beat up for it. Sasuke saw her eyes narrow, the corners filling up ever so slightly with angry tears. They left him lying there, and I wanted to help him. My caretaker, Ko, refused to let me. I started seeing him more. She blushed slightly, almost revealing that she had turned into a stalker. The villagers treat him terribly. It makes me angry every time I see it but he never gave up. No matter who walks over him or insults him, he yells right back and keeps his smile on his face. Sasuke nodded slowly, taking in the information about his new friend. I've noticed you're protective of him. Why is that if he's never going to give up? Sasuke watched her face contort into one of pain. She bit her lip, looking at him sideways. I saw something. A group of people. They heard him really bad she cast her gaze towards the ground, a few tears falling freely. I, I thought he was dead. But then I saw him again, a short time later, and he was just as he always was she wiped at her eyes with her other arm, her eyes daring Sasuke to make a comment. He didn't. After that, I made a promise to myself that I would do everything I could to protect Naruto-kun. No matter what. Sasuke remained silent, thinking about everything the Blunet had said. It certainly seemed like Naruto had a rough childhood, he hadn't known the blonde to get physically abused. He knew he was an orphan, but not that he had to struggle just to get along in the village. They rounded a corner and saw the entrance to the Ichiha compound. Sasuke narrowed his eyes slightly, it was surprisingly quiet. Usually there was at least a few kids out playing around this time, seeing as how their compound was so secluded, there were no real threats lurking in the night. Anata something's wrong Sasuke murmured, drawing his arm back to him and slumping forward slightly. Ow, his body hurt. He didn't fall though, and he took a few slow steps forward, before starting forward at a steady pace towards the entrance to his home. Hinata followed a few paces behind, looking tense as well. She lived in a similar compound and could recognize the eerie quiet that had fallen. As they drew near to the gate, Sasuke's pace quickened. If we find Itachi Niasen, he'll be able to explain things. He said confidently, stepping through the arch that marked the Ichiha's territory. He'll tell us what's going. Sasuke's mind slowed to a stop. On the ground, slumped near an alleyway, was a dead shinobi, his tantal loosely in his hand, a clean slice across his throat. Sasuke's stomach heaved, but he kept it in check. He could feel his fear begin to rise, and he grasped wildly for Hinata. She quickly offered him her hand, looking horrified at the body just meters away. A Sasuke kun she said, fear evident in her voice. Let's let's go tell someone. Sasuke started forward, pulling her with him. W we need to find Itachi Niasen. He said, his voice shrill. But as they made their way through the compound, they encountered more and more bodies, lying dead on the street, on benches, and even a few hanging precariously from balconies. They were at a dead sprint now, young eyes clenching as far shut as they could to ignore the horrors around them. Sasuke turned a corner, thrusting open a door, Hinata following quickly inside. Otu-san. Ka-san. Itachi Niasen. He yelled, pounding through the house. Hinata followed fast on his heels, her fists clenched tightly, wishing they were back with Naruto. Sasuke thrust the door to his parents' room open and froze. Hinata slowly peeked around the side of him and felt her eyes widen in horror. There, on the ground, were Sasuke's mother and father. Dead. Sasuke fell to his knees, tears spilling freely from his face. Why? Why were his parents dead? Who would do this? Hinata took a step back, her young mind reeling. Flashbacks of Naruto's butchering were playing in her head, and she shook it wildly trying to force the images from her head. As Sasuke stared at the bodies of his family, he noticed a movement in the shadow. His hand shot to Hinata's, and she nearly jumped, her eyes searching frantically. Even as they spotted him emerging from the darkness, a bloody katana in his hands, they couldn't believe it. Ayatachi Niasen Sasuke said disbelievingly, looking from his parents' bodies to his brother and back. This didn't add up, foolish little brother. Itachi said coldly, his eyes completely devoid of the warmth Hinata had remembered in them. And Niasen who who killed our parents our clan Sasuke asked, his voice shaking violently. He didn't want to believe he couldn't believe, I did. He said simply, slowly wiping the blood off of his blade. Sasuke's eyes clenched shut, his fingernails drawing blood from his palms as his fists tightened. This is a nightmare he muttered, as he began to pinch his arm harder and harder. I'm dreaming I'm dreaming, this is no dream, Sasuke. Itachi said, his voice completely empty of emotion. This is reality. Our parents, our clan are no more.
WHHYY Sasuk screamed, tears still falling from his face. Why did you do it? Why? Itachi tilted his head, as if confused by the question. Why to test my strength, of course. Sasuke's eyes widened in shock and disbelief, and the tears stopped falling. WH what? Hanada's eyes were wide as well. To test his strength. He murdered everyone to test his strength. Foolish little brother. Itachi repeated, everyone is always telling me what a genius I am, how I could be the most powerful Ichiha to appear in generations. What good are words I needed proof. So I decided to wipe out our clan with these eyes. He finished, activating his Sharingan. Sasuke and Hinata watched in disbelief as the three Tama that comprised his Sharingan twisted into the likeness of a shuriken. Sasuke rose to his feet shakily, stepping backwards towards the door. Hinata was just behind him and stepped back as well. They needed to get out of here he would kill them. What what is that? Sasuke asked, hesitation in his voice. That's not a regular Sharingan. This is the evolution of the Sharingan. Itachi said, sheathing his sword. It is powerful. Sasuke looked as if he were about to throw up. You you murdered our family to test your eyes Itachi Nai Itachi was suddenly before the two of them, fists planted in both of their guts. Sasuke and Hinata both doubled over, coughing violently as the air was expelled from them. They fell to the ground, clutching their stomachs. The two of you he said with disinterest, are too weak. I don't need to compare myself with the likes of you. Sasuke heard his footsteps leave the room, through his family's house, and finally exiting outside. Everything became quiet, save for Sasuke's quiet sobs. Hinata slowly pushed herself to her knees, sucking in deep breaths. She averted her eyes from the pair of corpses and pulled on Sasuke's arm. As Sasuke can we and need to go she urged, panic and fear in her voice. They had to leave before the elite Ichiha changed his mind about not killing them. Didn't Sasuke realize the danger they were in? Sasuke's face rose to meet hers, and she stepped back at the unbridled fury that lay upon it. Itachi. He bellowed, throwing himself towards the door as he sprinted towards his departed brother. Hinata followed, pleading with Sasuke to leave, but he wouldn't listen. He spotted his brother walking down the street, almost nonchalantly. Sasuke felt his anger boil over as he whipped a handful of shuriken from his holster, which was still attached to his waist from his earlier training. He whipped them at frightening speeds towards Itachi, who turned on the spot, catching all of them out of the air, as if they were lobbed gently at him. Sasuke rushed forward, aiming a punch at his brother's torso. Itachi caught the fist easily, swung him in a circle and threw him towards Hinata, watching as they crumpled into a heap together. Foolish little brother. Sasuke grit his teeth, that mantra was infuriating him. Did you think you really had a chance as you are now? Here, let me show the both of you are difference in powers. They both raised their gaze to Itachi's, and before they could realize their mistake, they were falling into inky black pools, descending into nothingness. Sasuke pushed himself to his knees, looking around himself in a panic. Where was he? Where was Itachi? His gaze was drawn by two figures, kneeling in the center of a room. He squinted, Dusan. Kasan. He whispered, clambering to his feet and running towards them. He was abruptly caught by his throat and pinned to a wall that previously didn't exist behind him, and his eyes fell level with that of his brother's. Welcome, foolish little brother Itachi said in an empty voice. Tatsukiyomi. Sasu cried, trying to escape his brother's grip when he felt a blade plunged into his shoulder. He gasped, before screaming in pain, nearly blacking out when a similar one was thrust into his other shoulder, pinning him to the wall. He watched as Itachi strode behind their parents, drawing yet another sword, lowering it to his father's throat. Time passes here much slower than that of the real world. Itachi said in a detached voice, before slashing. Sasuke yelled as his father slumped to the ground, lifeless, blood pouring from his slashed throat. Hot tears streamed down Sasuke's face as Itachi lowered the point of the blade to align with his mother's heart. While an entire day passes in here, only a second passes in reality. Itachi said calmly, before thrusting the blade through the woman that had cared for Sasuke since the day he was born. Sasuke's screams didn't cease, despite the pain that had begun to bloom in his throat. The pain in his shoulders seemed minuscule compared to the one he felt in his heart. He was being forced to watch his parents being murdered, right in front of him, by the very brother had idolized. He clenched his eyes shut, wishing the entire thing away, and when he opened his eyes, his parents were kneeling placidly on the floor again, not a single drop of blood in sight. His eyes widened as he saw Itachi watching him calmly, his sword still in hand. I control everything that happens in here. Itachi said, leaning into the blade to drive it slowly through his father's chest. Sasuke watched in mute horror as his dad choked on his own blood before falling onto his side, his crimson life fluid leaking from his still open mouth onto the floor. You will endure the sight of our pitiful parents dying, again and again for 72 hours. Sasuke felt sobs rack his body as he watched Itachi impale their mother upon his blade again, her pain-filled eyes searching his for help. That look would haunt him for years to come. Hinata stumbled backwards, her biakigan flaring. Where was she? 
she couldn't see anything just inky blackness wait, she started sprinting. Naruto was there, running towards her, concern etched onto his face. He reached a hand towards her, he was nearly there. His eyes widened and he looked down at his chest. Hinata followed his gaze, and to her horror, a blade had sprouted from where his heart would be, blood flowing from the wound. His eyes bore into hers with a look of surprised anguish. Hi Nata-chan he muttered, before the light left his cerulean orbs. Hinata felt herself break. Naruto couldn't be dead. There was no way. This was a dream. This wasn't real. She felt her head snap back as she was tossed by it, launching her into a tree. Her back struck it hard, and she slid to the bottom, her vision blurring. Welcome, young Hayuga, Tatsukiyomi. Her eyes struggled to focus on the man standing before her, and before she could move, the roots of the tree worked their way around her, binding her to the massive trunk. She began to struggle against the bindings, unable to move, when she froze. Anata chan She focused her eyes on an orange blob that was rapidly approaching, wincing as it dropped to her side. Then Naruto-kun. She whispered. As if in a dream, the blonde nodded tensely, resting his hand on her cheek. Did he hurt you, Hinata chan The boy said, anger in his eyes. Hinata shook her head, tears spilling freely. I thought I thth thought you wwww were dd. I'm right here, Hinata chan Naruto said, offering a confident smile. Hinata felt her hopes rise. Naruto would save her. He never gave up not until he accomplished what he wanted. Naruto turned and faced Itachi. You'll pay for what you did to Hinata chan he said, rushing at the elder boy. He threw a vicious right hook that followed with a backwards roundhouse, using all his speed and agility to try and strike Itachi. Hinata saw immediately that it was in vain, but before she could yell for him to run away, Itachi rammed his katana into Naruto's throat. Hinata's eyes widened as blood began seeping from his mouth, his eyes turning wildly to hers. Adachan he gurgled out, his eyes rolling into the back of his head. Run, she screamed as his body slumped to the ground, devoid of life. In this world. Itachi said coldly, you will experience the greatest pain you can imagine for 72 hours. Hinata barely registered his words. Naruto was dead before her eyes, and she was powerless to help him. It was all the training, all the time she put forth to get strong for him for nothing. All the praise she'd managed to get from her clan, growing from the worthless heiress to the strong-willed princess. Hinata. She turned tear-filled eyes to see Naruto, completely unharmed, sprinting towards her, fury in his blue eyes. Nu. Hinata screamed, struggling unsuccessfully to free herself from her bindings. Naruto can run, he'll kill you Naruto can run away. Naruto didn't listen, however, and as he was about to reach her, was thrown backward slightly as a blade neatly sliced his chest open. She watched, screaming, as Itachi walked up to the now prone boy and rammed his sword through the fresh wound he had made. Hinata's sobs turned to hyperventilation. This was too much. She was going to go mad, and suddenly, in the middle of what seemed like the 50th Naruto being murdered before her eyes, the void of darkness was gone, as were the dead Narutos around her. The Achiha compound came into focus for one pain-filled second, and then she passed out. Itachi grimaced, deactivating his dejutsu and gripping his head. He watched, heartbroken, as Sasuke slumped to the ground next to his friend. It seems it's beyond my ability to perform the full Tsukiyomi on two at once Itachi thought, his eyes throbbing. It had only been half the time it should have been. Nevertheless I think I got to Sasuke young brother, I hope you garner the power to kill me and free me of this sin. Itachi leapt quickly towards the Hokage Tower to inform the Sandame of his actions. They had not been ordered directly by him, but his council member, Danzo. He would still need to be informed, however. And warned that if anyone were to harm Sasuke he would be back. Let's continue, shall we? Hinata. She turned tear-filled eyes to see Naruto, completely unharmed, sprinting towards her, fury in his blue eyes. Nu. No. Hinata screamed, struggling unsuccessfully to free herself from her bindings. Naruto can run, he'll kill you Naruto can run away. Naruto didn't listen, however, and as he was about to reach her, was thrown backward slightly as a blade neatly sliced his chest open. She watched, screaming, as Itachi walked up to the now prone boy and rammed his sword through the fresh wound he had made. Hinata's sobs turned to hyperventilation. This was too much. She was going to go mad, and suddenly, the void of darkness was gone, as were the dead Naruto's around her. The Achiha compound came into focus for one pain-filled second, and then she passed out. Itachi grimaced, deactivating his dejutsu and gripping his head. He watched, heartbroken, as Sasuke slumped to the ground next to his friend. It seems it's beyond my ability to perform the full Tsukiyomi on two at once Itachi thought, his eyes throbbing. It had only been half the time it should have been. Nevertheless I think I got to Sasuke young brother, I hope you garner the power to kill me and free me of this sin. Itachi leapt quickly towards the Hokage Tower to inform the Sandame of his actions. They had not been ordered directly by him, but his council member, Danzo. He would still need to be informed, however. And warned that if anyone were to harm Sasuke he would be back. 
Naruto laid his head at Hinata's side, tears flowing heavily as great sobs erupted from his mouth. She had been found in a near comatose state, along with Sasuke inside the Achiha compound, surrounded by dead members of the esteemed clan. Sasuke was the only remaining survivor except for the perpetrator. Naruto, still weeping, clenched his fist tightly. Sasuke's brother, Itachi, was the one that did this to his two friends, half of the people he could say that he trusted. If only he'd been there if only. Naruto almost started choking on his own breath as new sobs climbed out of his throat. He wasn't there for them he wasn't there. Flashback. Naruto walked happily into the classroom the following morning, a large grin on his face, with his hand settled nonchalantly behind his head. His eyes immediately traveled to his, Hinata's, and Sasuke's seats, and his smile faltered for a fraction of a second when he saw every seat empty. The blonde shrugged it off as them running late, and the grin returned a second later, remaining in place for several minutes while he sat down and waited for his friends. But they never came. As the minutes ticked nearer for classes to start, Naruto's grin slid from his face. They were never this late, had something happened. Naruto's thoughts lit to the night before, when he had brushed his friends off to get food with his sensei. If they had gotten hurt because he had left them alone, he shook his head fiercely, trying to expel the intrusive thoughts. That kind of negativity was always chastised by the third Hokage, the only person that Naruto openly confided in while growing up. The old man would smile at him and tell him that the only way to attain happiness was to hold his head high and his attitude optimistic. Naruto had tried to live up to the old man's words, but needless to say it was very difficult when almost everyone hated him. He had found recently, however, that it was much easier. Especially when he had people to help him through the tougher times. Naruto's eyes glued to Aruka's face as he walked in, noting the deep bags under his eyes, as well as the very neutral expression on his face. Something wasn't right. Naruto was at his desk in an instant, drawing the eyes of the entire class to him. Half of them glanced up to his seat to see the other two desks empty, before also looking to Aruka in curiosity. Aruka sensei, where's Hinata-chan and Sasuke? Naruto asked, his voice leaking concern. He saw Aruka wince, and his heart turned to ice. I, I would rather make the announcement to the class, Naruto Aruka said, his voice sounding tired. Naruto didn't move. Where are my friends Naruto asked, his voice shaking with suppressed emotion. Aruka looked at Naruto for a second longer, taking in his slightly watery eyes, before sighing. Here, I'll tell you in the hallway. The other students watched as Naruto was taken into the wall by a tense looking Aruka. Several minutes passed, and the only noise be heard was Aruka's gentle murmur through the wall as he addressed Naruto. Without warning, the door shot out of its frame, causing a few people to scream. An orange blur rocketed across the room and out the window, shattering it completely. A few of the students were on their feet, looking towards the empty doorframe where Aruka was slowly making his way through it, a defeated look on his face. Aruka sensei, what's going on? Kiba asked, his canine companion yipping his confusion as well. Aruka looked to the remainder of the class, who all looked confused and worried, before sighing. Sometimes, giving him so many young minds to teach was wonderful. The ability to help them grow, mature, and strengthen each other's bonds to one another was great. But it came with a downside. Sometimes, you had to break their spirits, you had to give them news they couldn't comprehend, and then watch as they struggle to understand it, never the wiser to the fact that they are almost incapable of doing so, without seeing the evil senior shinobi are used to encountering. With a heavy heart, Hiruka began to tell the class how there was no more Ichiha clan, and a brand new S-ranked missing nin from their village. Then flashback, Naruto grasped Hinata's hand tightly, tear streak staining his whiskered cheeks. He had no more tears left, only a great darkness that seemed to lay before him. How would they react when they woke up? He had left them he wasn't there to protect them when they needed it. Naruto felt broken as his laid by Hinata's thigh, ignorant to the twitching of the brunette's opposite hand. They would surely hate him. Why wouldn't they? He failed them. He promised to protect them and he didn't. He thought with a sick sort of humor how happy he had been in the half a year he had been with Hinata and the few short months with Sasuke. It was too good to be true, of course. He was bound to mess it up sooner or later. The villagers were right, he didn't deserve happiness or love or any of that. Naruto fell backwards as a hard hand connected with his cheek, sending him off his seat. He raised a hand gingerly to his face, his eyes raising hesitantly to meet the angry orbs of his best friend. His gaze immediately flickered to the floor, fresh tears managing to form in his dry eyes. Hi Hinata ch no, Hinata Asama, I I'm so sorry that I failed you, I, Naruto-kun. Hinata's voice came, sounding strangely distant. Shut up. Naruto felt his heart clench at her words, a particularly nasty sob forcing its way from his mouth. He turned around wiping at his eyes as he started for the door. Crying in front of her was pitiful and would probably only anger her more. Where are you going? He froze, turning frightened eyes to the bed Hinata was set in. He didn't dare look into her eyes. Stay away from you, Hinata-sama so that I don't, stop that. Naruto raised his red puffy eyes to Hinata's. 
Her expression didn't hold hate or anger. It didn't hold happiness or anything else either. It seemed sort of empty. Huh? He got out, wiping at his eyes again. I like Chan better. She said simply, blinking at him. Naruto blinked back, confusion driving sadness to the back of his mind. ISH shouldn't get to call you that Naruto said bitterly, kicking at the ground. I don't deserve to, shut up. She said again, a frown marring her face. When Naruto didn't respond she continued. And don't ever let me hear you saying the villagers are right about anything ever again. They're all terrible, and I'll make them pay one day. Naruto's eyes widened as they shot to hers once again. Had he been saying his thoughts out loud? And why? Why are you defending me? He asked, his voice quickly becoming frantic. I failed you, I failed Sasuke. I wasn't there when I should have been, I went to stupid dinner instead of staying with you, I should have been there I should have he swayed, before slumping backwards onto the floor, leaning against the wall. I should have been able to protect my precious people. Come here, Naruto looked up to see Hinata gesturing to him, the barest hint of a blush on her cheeks. Naruto shifted himself to his feet, the ghost of a smile playing at his features. That blush was something familiar. He crawled into the bed besides Hinata, hugging her tightly. She didn't return the embrace immediately, caught by surprise that the boy had been so bold with her, she had only intended to get him back into his seat beside her, after all. She gradually sunk into it, however, allowing the walls she had unconsciously put up in her sleep come down a little. This was Naruto after all, she could confide anything to him. Naruto smiled lightly as he saw the ends of her ears turn a little pink, backing away to see a faint blush playing on her features. It disappeared, however, as he thought to how he had failed her. Hinata-chan he began anew, his voice laced with shame. Almost immediately, Hinata shoved her face further into his chest, shaking her head frantically. And no, Naruto-kun she said, beginning to adopt her stutter again as she was in such close proximity of the objects of her admiration. It's and not your fault. I promise, and neither me or Sasuke's and are you upset with you. She paused for a moment to look up at him, before leaning her forehead back against his chest. And fuck the villagers. Naruto's mouth fell open as he gawked at her language. He had begun to adopt it himself, seeing as how it was the only interaction he had with the majority of Kanoha's population, but he was taught by the Sandame to not use such language in front of women of children, as it was considered rude. To hear her curse them so openly, Naruto started giggling, crushing the brunette's face to his chest, causing her blush to deepen. You're really awesome, Hinata-chan he said quietly, squeezing her. And I know you say you're not mad, but I promise to make this up to you. Hinata pursed her lips but didn't speak, nodding into his warm body. It wouldn't do good for her to resist, as Naruto's personality wouldn't allow him to just accept the situation as it was. He would always blame himself to some extent, and she would just have to lessen the guilt he felt by convincing him that she was fine. Which, for the most part, she was. Her eyes darkened, unseen by Naruto. She didn't know exactly how she felt. On one hand, she could easily acknowledge that everything she'd seen was an illusion. Itachi had told her that his Tsukuyomi would be lasting 72 hours, but it hadn't seemed nearly that long. Something must have happened. She buried her face flush against Naruto's chest, but only to hide her still distant eyes. Despite the fact that Naruto was right here, Itachi's apparent ease at killing him over and over and over she shuddered. It had made her realize that there were much stronger people than them everywhere. She had been on a sort of high, training with Naruto day in and out, and relishing in the strength he was achieving and the confidence he gave her. She had felt like they could take the world on, him leading the charge while she protected his back every step of the way. But her encounter with Itachi had brought her back down to earth, and she knew now that her previous way of thinking of dangerous. Not only to her, but to her Naruto-kun. If he got too confident, too sure of himself against an unknown opponent, she gripped his shirt tightly, not noticing the gentle shake she was receiving. It had hurt to see him die so many different times in front of her, each more brutal and emotionally cutting than the last. She never wanted to see his blood stain the ground again or stain her. She shuddered, remembering the few times where Itachi had eviscerated her Naruto-kun within inches of her face, spattering her with his blood, leaving him pale, white and empty-eyed on the ground, and not a chan. Her eyes snapped up to Naruto's as his frantic gaze caught her. His hand came up to wipe at her cheek, and she noticed there was a trail of tears leading down her face. Anata-chan are you okay? Naruto asked softly, removing her tears carefully with his thumb. Anata blinked before lowering her head, ashamed. She was showing weakness in front of Naruto-kun, that was unacceptable. She had to be his pillar, she had to remain strong. You can talk to me, Hinata-chan. Her eyes flickered back up to his hesitant expression. He looked almost uncomfortable. I don't really know how to comfort anyone. The old man usually just hugged me when I got sad, which I tried, but you still seem upset. I'm sorry, I'm kind of useless with these things. Hinata watched him fidget with her pillow and smooth out his shirt where he thought she was laying, admiration in her eyes. There was also a warmth that started in her stomach and was slowly making its way through her body. 
It was still a good positive feeling, but different. It was the feeling she got when Naruto brushed her hand with his, when he held her like he was now, when he praised her, when he told her she was the most important person in his life. But now this feeling had a name, and Hinata felt her face grow hot. She knew what he was to her. She knew the fullness of her affection for him. She she lo. A scream ripped through the air, quickly pulling Hinata from her intimate thoughts. Sasuke was writhing on the bed, his eyes screwed shut with pain. Naruto instantly launched himself over, attempting to shake Sasuke awake. Raga. Itachi. Sasuke screamed, bolting upright, eyes wide and filled with righteous fury. He whipped his head around before reality took hold and he realized where he was. His fists clenched tightly as he glared at the sheets beneath him, clenching his teeth. Itachi why why did you take everything from me why did you do this? Sasuke's head snapped up as a hand settled on his shoulder. He traced the offending appendage and found the owner to be Naruto, gazing at him solemnly. Sasuke Naruto said lowly, his gaze falling sadly to the ground. I'm I'm sorry. Sasuke's angry expression turned to one of surprise as he took in the remorseful boy in front of him. He saw his eyes flicker to the opposite wall and saw Hinata sitting up in bed, a slight glare directed at Naruto. He stared at Hinata until he caught her eye, desperate for someone to know the pain he went through. As he stared at her with wide, anguish-filled eyes, she got his message and nodded, her eyes flashing to Naruto. Sasuke furrowed his brow, looking down as tears stained his eyes. Hinata had witnessed Naruto's death then. Well he he had endured his parents' murder. Over and over. But something was bothering him. The door to their room swung open, and the Hokage stood on the other side, flanked by nurses who looked quite worried. He peeked in, spotting Sasuke rubbing his forearm across his eyes frantically, and sighed. He had been about to go home last night when Itachi had appeared, slightly bloodstained in front of him. He had recounted his secret mission, and while Saratobi had been furious, he had ultimately understood why Danzo had gone to the lengths he had to ensure that uprising of the Ichiha clan didn't occur. That wouldn't stop him from taking retribution on the man who so blatantly ignored his post as Hokage, but that would have to wait. He had to send Anbu to collect the bodies, secret scrolls and weapons the clan possessed, and start documenting them all, as well as official forms marking Itachi as a missing nin. And now, is it alright if I come in? He said lightly, offering the three children a kind smile. Sasuke looked at him emptily, shooting a look over to the brunette opposite him. She gave him a nod, and he redirected the gesture to the elderly Hokage. Hiruzen smiled his thanks before shuffling in, closing the door behind him despite the nurse's protests. His face quickly adopted that of utmost seriousness, and he leveled a look of sympathy at the young Ichiha. Sasuke-kun. Hiruzen started, stepping to the foot of his bed. I would like to bestow upon you my deepest apologies regarding what has happened. As soon as we got wind of what had happened, we dispatched Anbu to the area to investigate and see if we could catch Itachi or find survivors. Unfortunately, I have nothing but bad news for both of those situations. Sasuke gripped his blankets hard, his eyes acting as windows to his rage and grief. He had no family left no one, from what we can tell, he used an advanced jinjutsu on both you and Hinata-san when you confronted him. He continued, it is most fortunate that he did not continue it longer. You both suffered some mental damage, but if you had been in it for much longer, there is no doubt that your psyches would have suffered much more, even to the point of changing your personalities for the worse. The Yamanaka went into your memories when you reported to the hospital it was standard procedure Naruto, don't give me that look. He added, when Naruto looked like he was about to shout out in protest, and they are currently looking into the Ichiha scrolls about what your brother dubbed Tsukiyomi for lasting effects. Fortunately, our foremost Jinjutsu expert, Yuuhi Kurinai, has spoken to Itachi about it before. It seems that it places you into an alternate reality that stresses the mind and makes a passing second seem like an entire day. It would appear that you both somehow escaped its power earlier than you should have, as she tells me that if someone endures the entire ordeal, it can leave someone quite broken. He finished, offering the two children a half smile. Anada watched the sand dame without expression. She could easily see how someone can lose themselves in that place if she had been subjected to Naruto dying for much longer than she already had. Hiruzen watched Hinata keep a pensive stare and frowned slightly. He had visited the Hyuga estate and seen her on several occasions, though not for the past several months. She seemed different to him now. He would have to look into it later. He turned back to Sasuke to see him struggling with something. Okajama he said weakly, looking up to the elderly man with wide, frightened eyes. What will I do now? I have no family he looked down, pain evident in expression, until it darkened. Except him, Hiruzen didn't like that look. It was reminiscent of when his student's parents had died, one that sought power, no matter the cost, to reach the end goal. Hiruzen opened his mouth to speak, but someone else had beat him to the punch. Hey, Sasuke Naruto said slowly, causing the Ichiha's head to turn to him. You know I don't have any family either but you know, I still have you guys. He said, half smiling at his friend. Sasuke didn't smile back. 
it's not the same. He said harshly, anger seeping into his voice. I had a family, I had my mother and father and an brother and now they're all gone. He shouted, punching the bed angrily. Naruto stayed silent for a moment before he spoke again. You're right I don't know what it's like to have a mom and dad, but I think I can feel like what it's like to have a brother. He finished passionately, a fire erupting in his eyes as he stared Sasuke down defiantly. Sasuke looked taken aback. What's that supposed to mean? He asked, confusion replacing rage. Naruto smiled, extending his fist towards the ebony-haired boy. Well, for the past few months, hanging out with you I feel like you're the closest thing to a brother I'll get, you know. Sasuke didn't talk or blink. He simply stared at Naruto, before, very slowly, a small grin appeared on his face. You and me brothers, ha he said to himself, looking at his hands. It was true that he had grown close to Naruto and Hinata and spent more time with them than his own parents or brother. They weren't to blame, necessarily, his dad was the head of the clan after all, and his mother was present at all clan matters to help balance his father's more aggressive and brash nature. And Itachi was, he cut his thoughts off. Itachi was no longer to be remembered fondly. He was a curse to Sasuke and he would do everything in his power to get stronger, to kill him and avenge his family one day. Sasuke nodded to Naruto, giving him the best smile he could muster at that moment, which came out as a smirk. I guess we are kind of brothers, aren't we he said, bumping Naruto's fist with his own. In that case, you need to help your brother get strong. His face darkened and Naruto paled a little when he saw the amount of hatred Sasuke had summoned to his features. I need to kill Itachi one day and I'll need all the strength I can get, here is and watch their exchange with both happiness and sorrow. He was glad that the Achiha had not fallen so far into darkness as to shut everyone else out and was glad to see that his surrogate grandson had obtained such good friends. At the same time, however, he grieved to see Sasuke's reaction to his brother's unknown sacrifice and how he was coping with his loss. Maybe someday you'll find out the truth the Sandame thought, watching Sasuke punch Naruto playfully on the shoulder. I hope that you do your brother has done more for this village than almost anyone I know. Well, if that's the case. The old man said, smiling at the three of them. You all have a week off of classes, since your progress, I dare say, is quite extraordinary. Naruto smiled brightly at the praise, while Sasuke nodded politely. Hinata, Hiruzen noted, looked down blankly, but he could sense anger behind her eyes. Why, anyway, I let Aruka know about the situation. Naruto, don't let your skills dull in your short time off. The Sandane teased, laughing at Naruto's affronted expression. Your friends have a perfectly fine excuse seeing as how they're bedridden, but you don't. Have a good day you three. And with that, he strode from the room, finally allowing the nurses inside to check on their patients. A short time later and Sasuke found himself sleeping again, leaving Naruto and Hinata in relative privacy. Naruto pulled a chair up to Hinata's bed and looked curiously at the bluenet. Hey, Hinata-chan, why do you look so sad? He asked, poking at her arm. Hinata gave a small jump as she was drawn from her thoughts again and cursed silently. Eh sorry, what was that in Naruto-kun? She asked shyly, embarrassed that her newly christened crush had found her oblivious to her surroundings. I ask why you look so sad. Naruto said, his eyebrows knitting together. I don't like it when you're sad, you never smile, and your smile is the best. He said, grinning at her. Hinata blushed, poking her index fingers together. He had said her smile was the best. Her joy at his comment was quickly squashed as she recalled her previous thoughts, however. How would she ever find a way to bring up what she saw in Itachi's Jinjutsu and how badly it had affected her? How all she thought about was how worthless she truly was to be unable to save him, even if that wasn't really him. How she felt worse than garbage about her skills and how she was scared, scared that they would encounter just as strong as Itachi and she would lose Naruto. For real, this time. She would see that blade plunged into his throat, hear his choked last words, watch his bright eyes fade to a life less gray. For the second time that day, she felt small arms encompass her. She noticed her cheeks were wet again and she sobbed loudly. Why why was she so weak? Anata chan don't. Naruto said loudly, surprising her. You're not weak at all. You're one of the strongest people I know. He said, and his words pierced her. While she was admonishing herself for emulating Naruto's action by speaking her thoughts without meaning to, she was also trying to make sense of his words. H how? She breathed, clutching his shirt. She could almost hear him smiling. Because you never give up and I know I can rely on you. And you kick everyone else's ass constantly. He added, giving her a squeeze. Even if you were beat by Itachi, he's like, one of the best in the village, right? I remember Sasuke saying he was a Chunin or Jonin by our age, right? So there's nothing to feel bad about. We'll keep getting stronger, and by the time we have to fight him or anyone else like him, we'll be able to take them on for sure. His words held such confidence, such surety, that Hinata wanted to believe every word. But, the Naruto that had his chest sliced open had that tone as well. 
The Naruto that swore he'd protect her and been decapitated spoke in that tone. The one that had his head caved in, the one who burned to death, the one whose body was made into a pin cushion for kunai they all spoke with the certainty that the real Naruto did. As much as she wanted to accept his words and believe in herself as strongly as he did, she couldn't. He was right about one thing though, they would get stronger. They had to. Anata grit her teeth as he father dodged her open palm strike and retaliated with his own. She was knocked harshly to the ground, another scrape joining the numerous ones that already adorned her body. Her father straightened up, eyeing her with slight worry. That will be all for today, Hinata. He said, you have made very good progress, so there will be no need for, again. She hissed, settling into her Jayukan stance. His eyebrows raised slightly, an uncommon show of emotion for the head of the Hyuga clan. Hinata, any further training will be detrimental to you due to your current state. He said, leveling a gaze at her. She turned her head, spat out a glob of mucus, and looked back at him. Again. She repeated, before rushing forward. Her muscles screamed at her in protest as she went on the offensive, throwing rapid palm strikes at her father's body. He brushed them aside with ease, but it was taking his concentration to do so. Long were the days when he could admonish her while simultaneously sparring, if he were to try and talk during their fight, she would be able to take advantage of it. Anata deliberately overextended her arm a bit, hoping her father would see it as a sign of fatigue. Luckily for her, he took the bait, and as he launched his counter-attack, she spun around it, thrusting her palm as fast as she could towards his exposed stomach. Her victory flashed before her eyes, but was squashed as his years of experience was shown to her in the form of a skillful twist of his entire body, moving his form along her arm to gain momentum, as he threw a twin set of palms into her back, knocking her onto her stomach. Anada cursed silently, punching the ground. That was the fastest she could push herself, and even with the tactical advantage she had bought herself, was too slow too weak. She pushed herself to her feet, wobbling slightly, as she turned to face her father. Again. Naruto sat alone in the clearing, stretching his limbs to their absolute limit. After summoning five clones to spar against and successfully dispelling all of them, he sat in the center of the grass, sighing. It had been a week since his friends had been released from the hospital, and instead of going to class, Haruka had visited to let them know they had an additional week off of school to recuperate, provided they did some form of personal training for at least a few hours a day. Naruto had taken it as an opportunity to get his friend's spirits up and for them to get back into the rhythm they had made for themselves, but it was in vain. Hinata hadn't appeared since she got released from the hospital, and Sasuke had only showed up once to say that he needed some time to himself and not to expect him at least until they started school again. Naruto would have tried to train with Shino instead, remembering that he seemed friendly enough but had no idea where to look for the boy. Naruto fell back onto the grass, watching the clouds float along the wind currents lazily. Naruto-san, it is good to see you here. Naruto's gaze wandered to the voice, and he smiled as he sat up. Shino. How did you know I was here? I didn't. The stoic boy said, my family sometimes utilizes this training ground due to the large expanse of forest to further our tracking abilities by attempting to learn the landscape by utilizing our bugs alone. I had let some of my hive loose when they detected you, and I decided to greet you. Naruto blinked before looking all over his body. Don't worry, my hive has returned to me. Shino said, adjusting his sunglasses. Naruto grinned sheepishly. Ah, that's good. Anyway, I'm glad you're here. Shino's head cocked to the side slightly as he took in the large smile on the blonde's face. Why is that? Naruto's grin got wider. Because I have no one to train with, and since you're here now, you can be my training partner. Shino stood silent for a second before seating himself beside Naruto. Where, if I may ask, are Sasuke-san and Hinata-san? Naruto's face fell slightly. I don't really know. I know that Sasuke wants some alone time, which is fine, but I haven't seen or heard anything from Hinata since they got out of the hospital. It's really worrying me, you know. Shino nodded solemnly, recalling the reason the three of them had not shown up to classes the past few weeks. The news of the Ichiha clan massacre had spread like wildfire, and sympathy was being offered in buckets to the young Ichiha whenever he was seen. All of the girls in their class waited every day to see if he would come back to classes, hoping to be the one to comfort him. As she know, it was kind of repulsive. I'm sorry I cannot say that I have seen Hinata-sen as of late. Hopefully everything can return to some sort of normality after you all return to the academy. Shino stated, to which Naruto nodded. Yeah, that'll be nice. But hey, do you want to train? Because I'm raring to go. Naruto said enthusiastically, stretching his shoulder. Shino thought for another moment before shaking his head. I'm sorry Naruto-san, but my father has mandated that my training be exclusively with my hive for the day. Since it has not been long since they have integrated with me, I must get more familiar with them so as to direct them with efficiency in battle. However, he added, spotting the crestfallen look on Naruto's face, after our classes tomorrow I would be happy to train with you. 
Naruto's face lit up and he smiled broadly at the Aburam. That's awesome. This is kind of like my training area, so you can just meet me here. And if you ever want to train with me and Hinata-chan, and sometimes Sasuke, you can just come here. Shino nodded, his slight smile hidden beneath the folds of his jacket. Very well then, I will see you tomorrow, Naruto-san. Shino said, before leaping off into the forest. Naruto smiled, punching his hand with renewed vigor. His friends may be acting a bit strangely, but he had confidence that they would return to normal before long. And when they did, they would continue their quest to get stronger. What if Naruto and Hinata hide their strength? Thanks for watching my video till the end. If you enjoy this content, then do consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like if you guys need the next part, comment down, and thanks for watching the video and see you guys in the next video.